Welcome everybody to the Tournament of Champions 2023 live at the KCI Expo Center in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm Sean Green, joined by the gambler himself, Mr. Danny Baggis. Danny, it is an absolute honor and pleasure to have you here with us this entire week. I, I appreciate it. This is going to be an unbelievable experience. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And what a venue. Oh, dude, the setup here is second to none. Oh, I, I, I believe it. Uh, when I walked in, I got chills. It doesn't happen often, but this is uh, going to be an unbelievable experience. Yeah, I cannot wait. It's going to be a great five days. We have some top storylines here that we're going to talk about real quick. First of all, $1.9 million being given away to our players this week. Say it one more time, Sean, just because they didn't hear you. $1.9 million. Yeah, $1.9 million. If that doesn't get you excited to wake up every morning to, just to throw darts, just with, to throw this beautiful game. With everything that you've done in your career, have you ever played for $1.9 million? Um, no, no. Right? Uh, may, Ali Pally, you know, a million dollars. Yeah, well, yeah 500000 UK. But when you played, it was like seven fifty. dollars Yeah, but yeah, exactly. And I was chasing it. I was chasing it. But no, $1.9 million for uh, darts in the United States is, is a feat. It's amazing. And yeah, it's great. And they run the tournament so perfectly. We have some great events. We have fantastic players here. And we're going to talk about that. We got the men's CSI, one of our favorite tournaments. It's singles, it's cricket, it's everything we do with the CSC Challenger Series on a brand new scale. Last year's champion, Jules Van Doggen, has not been talked about very much. Everyone who watches the CSC Challenger Series, it's all about Mike Maloney, who is just really good online, right. Jeremiah Millar, uh, Rick Henze, of course Leonard Gates, but there's someone that everyone should be talking about, right? You're right. Uh, Mike Maloney, obviously, he's shown he's won, I believe, the past two two online uh, events. Yes. And uh, Leonard Gates is always to be uh, reckoned with when he's on the board. Uh, Rick Henze, Jeremiah Millar, and so forth. But J Jules Van Dogen is playing some unbelievable darts right yeah. now. So I don't know how he can't be a hands-down favorite going into this event. Yeah, I think... You look at the bracket for the CSI, he's at the top of the bracket. You have Leonard and Mike Maloney in the bottom half of that bracket. Jules might have a pretty clear run to the finals there, and it's really kind of an iron sharp and iron in the bottom half of that bracket. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a tough bracket, but uh, you're absolutely right. You don't, you don't want to see when you look at a bracket, you know, you look for the top players, and no, no disrespect to anyone, but most of them are at the bottom of the bracket. And with Jules at the top, it's going to be an unbelievable – run for him in my opinion and I don't see him not making it to the finals yeah I mean second round matchup Leonard Gates versus Mike Maloney if they both win their first round how crazy is that <laughs> I love it I love it uh, you know people argue for it to be seated but uh, I argue the other end I, I believe they have it right I believe uh, it creates a Cinderella story for some yep. uh, when you do have those matchups especially so early uh, I, I don't love it for the losers bracket or the or the triple elimination and for, so forth but um, yeah, what a second round match that's going to be. It is in person, so uh, it's a little bit more even. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Buddy, we also have today, right? Well, we have the women's CSI. Let's talk about that real quick. Chrissy, Chrissy Grimmel is trying to go for three wins in the CSI event. Uh, she's a dominant force. She is a dominant force, uh, a Floridian of mine. Uh, she, she's been an unbelievable, unbelievable player for a long time. Yep. And uh, once again, we're just like Mike, you know, playing so well, and Jules, a favorite going into, there's no reason why Chrissy's not a, a favorite. No, absolutely. And I, you almost picked for both of them to repeat, right? Well, yeah. As the gambler. If yes. you're the gambler, if you're asking what's me the right money now, going on? Yeah, yeah. If you ask me right now, I, I don't shy away from picks, as we, as we know from previous uh, – <laughs> Uh, events. Uh, yeah, I'm putting my money on uh, Chrissy Grimmel and Jules Van Doggen to repeat. All right. Well, you hear, heard it here from the expert that we have this week with us. Thankfully, we have an expert this week with <laughs> us for the first time ever. Buddy, we have today a fantastic start to the event. There's no real big events like the CSI, the TOC finale, but we have triples in the morning, which is always fun. You got no cap. There's actually uh, 12 divisions total, 16 teams per division in this event. It's going to be a fun day to start off with. Yeah, something I've, I've never seen, an open triples. And so, you know, you, you have some, some great teams out there that are, that are in Division One, But they're also it, it, as low as Division four, 12, you said, 12, right? Yep. Division 12. I mean, no matter what division you're in, you're, you're playing for something prestigious. So it's, it's going to be good for everyone. Yeah, and it's opening tournament of the entire TOC. Everyone's going to have nerves coming into this. It really kind of sets the tone for the weekend, right? If you're throwing really well and you show up to this first event and you do poorly, now all of a sudden you're like, uh-oh, this could be a bad weekend. 
Yes, yeah, it does play into a role and in, in, into your mind. And this is a mental game. So you want to come out, you want to just have fun. Come out, have fun, play well, and, and see what the rest of the weekend's. But I, I was nervous coming in commentating, so I can't imagine how all these players are feeling. Yeah, it's, listen, I was nervous. I'm next to like a really famous person right now, guys. <laughs> but seriously, buddy, it's going to be a great week. You're going to want to stay with us all weekend long. Uh, today, all the way through Wednesday of this week, including the TOC finale, the blind draw finale, which uh, will set the, it'll put the icing on the cake, so to speak. Absolutely. That is uh, another event that is just uh, prestigious as well, and it's going to be big. It's going to be, I can't wait to see the teams that, that partner yeah. up. And, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the whole thing. It's going to be great storylines all week long. We are live from 1030 to 4 and then from 6 to 9 every single day right here. Partners Promoting Darts, USA Darts Productions. Sean Green, Danny Baggish are going to be in the booth all week long. I can't wait, buddy. It's going to be a great time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, to the 10th Annual Tournament of Champions brought to you by Partners Promoting Darts live at the KCI Expo Center in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm Sean Green, the play-by-play -play commentator, and I'm pleased to be joined in the booth by the gambler, Mr. Danny Baggish. Danny, we are in store for an amazing week here in Kansas City. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me, and I cannot wait. Uh, we have uh, already a great match coming up, and uh, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, we got the king seat right now of, uh, well, that's a different board game you got going on there. I think. Well, that's not Jamie Cop shooting. That's Nick Selepic uh, stepping up right there. So we'll see if we can figure that bad boy out real quick. Uh, but, hey, production. You know, if it didn't start off like this, it would be weird. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got, we got Jules, Mike, and Johnny against Kenny, Nick, and Sugar. What what a matchup that we're going to have right here. Yeah, this is going to be a great first-round matchup. There's Jules Van Dongen. Again, you mentioned it in our pre-show uh, a few minutes ago that um, Jules is just on the top of his game right now. Yeah, he's playing well. When, you, when you're playing that well in steel tip and you, and you switch to soft tip, uh, me personally, uh, I just think it's, you know, you're throwing darts into an ocean. So uh, I feel, I'm sure he feels the same as boom goes the Dynamite, Kenny Doyle. That's a nine mark in my book. I was about to say, it's an eight mark. So That's a nine mark in my book. It's three triples. I love it, and I had to get the, that one out the way. Hey, I love it. And for Kenny Doyle, Sunshine State Santa to get it on the board. Absolutely. Here's Mike Carter. First look at him today. And, yeah, you mentioned the teams. Mike Carter uh, is playing with Jules Van Dongen and Johnny Lackey. So those are three players from three different parts of the country, which you love to see. Uh, taking on Sugar Shane Johnson right here, uh, along with Nick Selepic and Kenny Doyle, who are typical doubles partners. So they added Sugar. They were they were nice to him to, <laughs> to add him to the team. Yeah. Uh, I, I will like to love to see how that matchup, uh, how they picked him. Uh, but obviously he's a good dart player, so that, that has to be the reason. This is the no cap of this event. Uh, again, triples. I, I said it earlier, I do – it's an interesting format of the triples being cricket format here. I uh, usually don't see that in tournaments. It is kind of a special thing for TOC. They love they love their cricket here at Tournament Champions. Yeah, I, I love the format. I, I prefer cricket over 01 anytime, any day. 
and to see it in the triples format uh, just makes for a, a great viewership. Uh, I'm sure everyone loves it and sees how they play against each other, their strategy, and so forth, so it's going to be good. I, I like to call this chess uh, as far as darts goes, and I consider 0-1 a little bit of checkers. I don't disagree. That's, that's, a, that's a great comparison. Who's your favorite here? Man, it's, it's hard to pick against Jules' team. Uh, I would say that as far as averages go, uh, it does slightly favor the team of Nick Selepic, Kenny Doyle, and Sugar Shane Johnson uh, overall. And um, that being said, though, Jules is at a whole new level of play right now, especially with what he's doing overseas. Uh, and right now he's playing with even bigger triples than he's typically used to. Yeah, well, in a triples event, it's uh, it's you know, it's obviously you, you depend on everyone, so it's going to be kind of hard uh, to pick against Kenny, Nick, and Shane for me. Yep. Um, but uh, Jules, Johnny, and Mike obviously have the game to to cause an upset here. Well, if anyone is looking for the brackets on CompuSport, uh, they are on CompuSport. Uh, if you just search uh, PPD Major Tournaments, uh, Tournament Champions pops up relatively quickly, and you can see all those different levels. And all of those brackets there. Sugar Shane Johnson making that one look sweet. A 5.33 average for him in that leg. And it looks like they break the throw right out the gate and take a one nothing lead. Yeah, what a shot. What a shot. And we were just talking about how, you know, how this team formed. And he shows why he's with this team. That was huge. I personally, I don't know if I just go Bulls there first. Yeah? Yeah, I might have went Bulls. Just to take the game shot out of their hand just in case you didn't hit the triple. But... That's why I'm here and I'm not there. Well, <laughs> listen, I think there are a lot of people that are in the room that are playing darts right now that are glad that you're sitting back here and not out there, which is not what they would be saying about me. Of course, I wouldn't be in this room. I'd be like, if there's 200 boards in here, I'd be like board 198 there in the back. I know corner. where that one's at, though. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> well, Kenny Doyle starts off with a big six mark there. So let's see. Uh, this is our first match of Tournament of Champions, buddy. You can find the brackets online at CompuSport for everyone that wants to watch along. Uh, today we have the triples, open triples right now is what we have going on. Um, 5 p.m. today, doubles going on to open doubles. Tomorrow morning is triples again. And then the men's CSI, that big event, uh, the men's cricket singles invitational gets us started uh, with those big $10,000 to first place prize. Yeah, that's a huge, huge check, and uh, it's going to be some interesting matches going on there. It's going to be it's going to be great to see, and uh, I want I want to see some upsets. And I think it lends itself to maybe having some of those instead of being a race to nine like we see in the CSC Challenger Series. Uh, it is just a race to two in the winner side. It is just a race to three or race to four uh, when it gets down into the the dirty nitty gritty. And last year we saw it go to a very last leg decider with Leonard Gates and Jules Van Dongen. And uh, both of them were exhausted after that match was over because they pushed each other to uh, their absolute limits. And that's exactly what the CSI um, can really do for these players. Yeah, you, you saw that uh, in, the, in the last game there. They, they were shooting mid fours or something like that, but it just shows the emotion, the stress. The, they were tired. They were mentally drained. And uh, what a match that was. I, I watched it myself, and uh, it was unbelievable. Well, looks like the team of Jules, Johnny, and Mike. Uh, there's a nice boom goes the dynamite there for Kenny Doyle. That's his second one that we've seen. Of course, the first one was Nate Mark, but that's okay. No. Uh, listen, it's tough to do this job. If, if you hit three triples, <laughs> it's nine. It's nine marks, okay? Whether the board tells you it's eight or not, it's it, to me, it's still nine. I enjoyed it, and uh, nice close there by Mike. And uh, I counted it, so therefore, uh, one for me. There you go. Hey. One nothing score line here. Race to four. King seat match of the no cap of triples. Live at the Tournament of Champions in Kansas City, Missouri. See that shot right there, Sean. Uh, I feel like, you know, uh, Johnny coming up. You know, three bulls to win, obviously. You, you would think he's going to hit it, but now he's more comfortable. That's He's, yep. he's going to go to 20. Uh, I probably would have tried to shut down the 20s and 17s. Leave the five bulls for Nick for the game shot. Because now with that double bull on dart three, that's almost a kill shot here for Nick to do anything crazy. He doesn't have winning darts in his hand. So math-wise, he's just going to have to go with the Bulls and see what happens. And he's not even going to be able to get the point lead now. Nope, and with Jules behind, you're looking for a 1-1 scoreline after this shot and uh, going into game three. Yeah, it should be dart one here. 
Yeah. Oh, what a call. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's Jules. That's easy. Um, Way to throw that one out there, Sean. It's almost as easy as doing commentary with you playing. It's just like, what does he have to hit? Okay, well, here's what he's going to hit. You know, it, it's nice and easy. Yeah. I wish I made it look like that all the time. <laughs> Well, when you can hear me in the background as you're shooting, that typically will throw you off a little bit. Yes, that, absolutely. And uh, that has happened, everybody, <laughs> in, a, in a huge match. Oh, they know. They've all seen it. Oh, yeah. It should just be like its own YouTube clip. It really, should. Of, of you just yelling at me. Um, I'll never forget about it. Hey, I, me either. <laughs> I cry about it every night still. Um, and then to come full circle, and now we're doing commentary together. I love it. Oh, good look by Jules. Smart shot, too. Can never battle the bigger number. You like getting getting rid of the high ground? Absolutely, no matter what. No matter even if they open up, you know, seven mark there, and I and I hit four nineteen, seven, uh, six nineteens. I'm I'm taking the twenty away. That was a weird last start from Sugar. I think he might have been just blocked on that twenty on dart three, but in that case, do you go over to the eighteens instead? Yeah, absolutely, and uh, just like this shot here. You know, I, I mean, everyone has a different strategy. They want, they want to point it up and and get ahead, two triples, which which I don't disagree with. But uh, just point in time that you gotta take that twenty away against players like Nick, even though he, this is a a struggling shot for him at the moment. Gets to opening for Johnny, uh, and you're gonna sh see him shut it down here. Should go there first start. Absolutely, guys. For those just tuning in for the first time, not knowing who these players are, um, a one mark. A two mark, even a three mark in one round is a, an off leg for these two or for these gentlemen, by far. Absolutely, absolutely. You expect them to be hitting at least one triple a, a round, but uh, doesn't happen all the time, and and that's where the other team pounces. Let me ask you a question: What is the difference between going once every six turns in a format like this, or once every you know other turn, or every four turns instead, like what you're used to in doubles and singles? Yeah, huge difference. Huge of momentum. Uh, not not just waiting around, you know, 12, 15, 18 darts. You're just waiting, you know, sometimes you're just waiting around three or or nine in doubles. Uh, it, it's You have to stay mentally focused. You, ha you have to make sure that you're approaching the line with the same determination. And sometimes you can get, you know, lazy and uh, throw tired or uh, just drain, even though you, you're not throwing as much. You're, you're just waiting around. So it makes it a little difficult. Look at this from Mike Carter. Gonna look over the 16s. Big nine mark from Mike Carter. That's Dyna Mike Carter. Dyna Mike. There you go. I like it. I like it. So Nick Selepic stepping up here. Maybe one of the classiest men from Florida. And only a one mark from him. He loved those neighbors. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna look like Johnny's here. Gonna shut the 15 down. Uh, not gonna worry about pointing and uh, looks to be an early 2-1 advantage if it goes to as planned. For oh. oh, if it goes to as planned and it did not that shot. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't just go fat single there on the 15. You know, throw a nice little Sean there in dart three. No, that that's that's the good. That's the right shot. Um, if it's a Sean dart or not, you just throw the single 15 to get it out the way. And how often does the next player come back and hit a nine mark just to punish you? Especially when it's Kenny Doyle. Oh. Yeah. Sunshine State Santa gets another one on the board. That's a second nine mark that we've seen, and third potential boom goes to Dynamite. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. For finally I'll adding that in. <laughs> and Jules, only a three mark. It, you know, it's weird to say those types of words out loud, like only a three mark, only a five mark. When we get into the CSI tomorrow, that's exactly what we're going to say over and over again because it's going to take sevens and nines to win matches. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, kind of the same situation there. I wish he would have took the shot at the 19 and the 18 uh, to give, you know, I know it's six bowls, but it st still gave him game shot if Mike missed here. Which he does. And I agree with you. It, it's always better to put pressure uh, on your opponent to hit those three bowls because you just never know. Yes, these guys are always good enough to hit that, but you're only going once every six turns. You're a little bit cold almost every time you step up to the line there. Um, and it can make a difference. Now tell me, is is uh, just being being new here, uh, race to four, obviously. Yep. And we see the team of Kenny, Nick, and Shane going first here. What happens in leg four? Who who starts? Uh, leg seven. 
If it goes the distance? No, the next leg. So, oh, so it's it, loser starts. Okay, so loser starts. Yep. It's not alternating. It is not. There no, we go. it is loser start. That last leg, they will diddle uh, for the last leg decider. Game shot here. Sean, sorry to interrupt, but game shot here. He's definitely going to take the shot. Oh, absolutely. And it's not a very difficult one. Now it's very difficult. Man. Almost, almost impossible after the first start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You'd need to borrow a dart. <laughs> Does get that point lead la back, but Jules wide open here to, to finish this one off, and you expect him to do it. Ten times out of ten, almost likely. Absolutely. Just three singles. I like the guts of the second dart. <laughs> Only a 4.75 from Jules, which is a major off leg for someone who basically averages a 6.0 in cricket and soft it. Yeah, it is a, It is an off leg, but uh, gets the job done. Yep. And they actually made it a little closer than it was earlier in the match. So um, look for a good battle here in leg four. And you, you said that you per you preferred, like, the team aspect of it for Kenny, Nick, and Shane. But in that last leg, obviously, Mike and Johnny stepped up a little bit there uh, in order to uh, support Jules. And he does not have slouches for teammates, that's for sure. No, no, not at all. And uh, that's what that's what he needs. So for him to have that and for them, all three of them to battle like that is, is huge. Good third from Jules, but... That's almost a gift for an opponent when Jules is only hitting five marks. Sugar going to take full advantage of that. Looking down. Ooh. Oh, that was a close one. Might have got robbed there, huh? What's the worst feeling in soft tip darts? Is it uh, when the dart bounces off the board and doesn't register anything? Or is it when it throws up the question marks? Uh, it throws up the question marks. Yeah, yeah. when it bounces off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you hit something. Yeah. <laughs> and for just be like, I don't know. It's like, what do you mean you don't know? Conf confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I've seen that a few times, and it's uh, it, that's a bit frustrating. So Nick and Kenny are from uh, Kissimmee, Florida. You have Sugar Shane from Wisconsin. Uh, Johnny Lackey from Houston, Texas. Uh, Mike Carter is from Arizona in that Phoenix area. And then, um, of course, Jules from about 10 minutes away from the venue here. In Park, Parkville, Park, Park, Parkview, Park something. I know it's Park something. It's probably better for us if we don't, I guess, give away Jules's exact address. Yeah, I mean, it is one three eight two five. No, I'm kidding. I just made that up. <laughs> he probably has uh, people go over there all the time, anyways. And now you just literally invited the whole, <laughs> the well, whole arena. I mean, it's better than the blind draw that was last night in Jim's, Jim Mount's room. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Justin, the Colts ac officially activate Jonathan Taylor from the reserve pup list to be active for, for tomorrow's game. Wow. Just saying. That's Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. If I was a gambler, I'd be taking the Colts tomorrow. Ken Kenny should be telling Shane right here uh, to go ahead and shut the 18 down. If you hit the triple, then move on to the 17 with the first start, uh, after the first start. But if not, then then go ahead and point. Yep. Right, because you're, you're only getting 200 points, you, so you're not maximizing your dart. So he'll go to the 17 here. There it is. Yeah, great darts there. Man, it's so nice to have someone who knows what they're talking about yeah, next to me. Yeah, because uh, I think he's saying if you hit the triple, you, you're not getting the full 340, aren't you? Because it's 200 points. Right. So uh, you don't want to waste any darts there. It's a good seven mark for Mike Carter. I love his throw. It's just so nice and smooth. It is smooth. Uh, to be honest, uh, I, 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 all six of these guys have pretty straightforward, straight back throw. Well, they all definitely have a consistent throw because you have to be to be at this level. That's that's what I would call the difference between maybe the no cap and level five. Uh, everyone can can throw those great darts from time to time. It's just the consistently being able to do it that makes the difference. Agreed. Nice seven mark by Johnny. Putting a little pressure, but Kenny's up next. Uh, let's see what let's see what he does. Shoot the triple. Move to the 16. Shut it down. Looks like he, yeah. There's. It looks like he's staying. He is staying. So he'll go to the 16 now. And that's just confidence to expect himself to hit the triple there. Yeah, absolutely. I think he, no matter if he went single, triple, triple doesn't matter. He was gonna sh shoot the 16 with the last start. All right, the Dutch Dragon stepping up here. Needs a lot of 15s to be able to put his team back in this leg or else it's going to be a 2-2 two -two score line here in just a second. Yeah, they're going to try to shut the 20 down. Five bulls, that's the shot that I was talking about earlier. There you go. Throws in a Maloney double too. Uh, yeah. Anyways. 
Sugar shuts down the bull, or now looking at double. Gets Twice. it. Twice. Game one, he did the same thing, and he does it there. And look at the smile. He knows it, too. You did that, buddy. You did that. It's like that was easy. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Two to two score line here. Race to four. This is exactly what you want as a king seat match, right? You want it to go the distance. You want it to be uh, neck and neck. And I think both these teams uh, more than capable of beating the other. And we haven't even mentioned that there's a team in the loser side right now that is uh, pretty stacked in Jesse Gore, Jeremiah Millar, and Leonard Gates. Yes, and uh, I believe they lost to Jules, Mike, and Johnny uh, early. The first round. In the first round. Yes. Yeah, okay. They're, so they're, they're going to be obviously fighting back. There's some great teams here. Garrett Rakowski uh, with Jake Smith and Porky, Steve Hilger. I mean, this, this no-cap bracket is just full of fantastic dart players. And dart players that we get to see all the time in the CSC Challenger Series, and it's great to see them all playing together with each other. Uh, you want to talk about the Henzies with Ken Rip also right now. They actually get the winner of the Jeremiah, Jesse Leonard, and Daryl Cortez, Jeff Burning, and Ram Gravera match, which is another great team. Yes. There's a lot of, a lot of st stacked teams out there for sure. That's why there's the no cap. No cap. That is exactly why this is the no cap, Sean. I tell you, you've pointed out some some great things and obvious things here early, and uh, I appreciate that. It's how I do my job correctly is I'm just obvious about it. Yeah, very obvious. If I'm obvious, then I'm correct, you know? Which is obviously correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny, going to look at the 18s. He needs another trouble to get the point lead. Yeah, Nixon going to be looking to pounce on that one. Couple trip 19s here, or oh, even a four mark. He'll take the look at the 18. Should at least. What does he do here? 19s, or does he try yeah, to take a look not, at it? He's got to stay at the 19. He's got the bigger number. Hit the triple, force, force him to hit. But uh, with Jules behind you, he's oh. gonna, he's gonna be determined with this shot. He's definitely gonna take the look. Yeah, the turntables might do their job here in just a second. And here we go. That's enough. Yeah. That is enough. Now that they have the bigger numbers, so uh, let's see what Kenny does. You hit two triple 16s here. Do you take the shot of the 18s? Uh, if I hit the first triple. Oh, he goes 15s and said for the switch. Yeah, that's exactly right. I love when he doesn't, like, he doesn't care on the last dart, and that's the one that, of course, hits the trip every time. Does it look does like he, does he look like he cares on every dart, like the way he throws? Listen, the focus that that gentleman actually does have when he plays darts at that line is is second to none, almost. Um, I once was trying to take a selfie with him while he was practicing, and he still threw the darts while I'm like touching his throwing arm, trying to take a selfie with him, <laughs> and he just he didn't care. He was he was practicing. Yeah, he's he's always been like that too. Here's Doctor Handsome Johnny Lackey. Yeah, just Johnny. Johnny Lackey's fine. He'll be looking to take the shot and go over to 16. Ooh, Johnny be good in that round. Yeah, Nick, Nick is, uh, he's going to rebound next game because he is getting frustrated. And I, I know how that is. You get frustrated, you can't take it into the next one. You feel like you're letting your team Right, out. and you don't want to be the person on your team that, that feels that way. Right? Absolutely not. If you're the person that apologizes to your team after the, the match, it's never a good good feeling. And Jules just going to do his thing here, probably close it out. Well, pretty self-explanatory what's going to happen in the next leg. And it's about to be a 3-2 to two lead for Johnny, Jules, and Mike. So Kenny, Nick, and Shane are going to have to hold their throw to get us to a last leg decider. Look at this from Kenny Doyle. Just five bowls, because why not, you know? Last leg decider. We d we all deserve it. Nice and early. First match on. There it is. Let's do it. Big dart there from Mike Carter. Three to two score line. And this has kind of gone two, two, two here. Uh, and the, the way that the shift has gone, or it went one, two, two. Uh, we we might have missed point. we might have missed the first leg. So it looks like it's uh, three, three. Oh, yeah, because the diddle actually does not count on the screen. That is very weird. 
So they're actually doing a diddle with like just the the bulls, right? Because that would make sense here. Oh, and Kenny gets it. What a double bull there from Kenny Doyle on the Snuck diddle. Snuck it in. That is huge. So there we go. Last leg decider. We called it anyway. We did. <laughs> we it's knew we deserved like it. It's almost like we knew and didn't <laughs> tell them. It's a surprise to everyone but us. Yep. You guys are lacking behind us. All right, so here we go. Three to three score line. This is for the king seat. Puts them in the driver's seat where, uh, first of all, I believe all these gentlemen are in the supercharger which is the $50,000 bonus pool here at TOC for the top 500 in the all-star rank list. So winning a, an event automatically gives you a share of that bonus pool. And if you win five events, you get five shares of that bonus pool. I've seen players win three or four events, which is great money to start off with. Looking up. Boom goes the dragon there. Look at that one. Breathing fire. That is the confidence in him that, that he has in himself right now. He, he almost knew that... He was going to hit that triple 20 after he hit the two triple 19s. Well, and that's been a bit of the difference with Jules now in the PDC is that he can win those last league deciders. And he has the confidence that he's going to shoot well when the pressure's on him. And Shane cheats there, taps in the triple 18. Yeah, the board does board, lie every once in a while. I mean, it, it does. And th that brings up a good point. Uh, if the if it would have registered a single 18 and it gave him a triple 18, what – what do you what do they do there? Do they give it to him, or does yeah. the board not lie? The the board can lie, if it bounces out, then obviously there's nothing you can do about that. But if it's sticking in the board, but you flight it into the triple eighteen. Yeah, but that's an obvious. Obvious. See, I'm gonna argue this one, if Sean. It, if it's stuck in there, it's stuck in there. I'm gonna argue this one. This is the, you. This is the reason why you play by the rules of soft tip, and it's a different game. Well, for sure. You know what I mean. But the rules of soft tip is if th it's obviously in the board. Uh, well, you just yeah. back it up and make it count. Yeah. Trust me, there'd be more fights if it was the other <laughs> way around, right? Absolutely. Be like, it's it's obvious right there. That'd be like doing the challenge in tennis for the Hawkeye, and then it shows that it's in, and the person being like, no, but I saw it was out. So it Absolutely. No, I understand. I would have liked uh, Nick there to take that shot at the 19. Oh, look at this from Johnny Lackey. Oh. Yeah, he tried the exact thing that you just talked about there. Yeah. Except the difference being the high ground versus the low ground. Exactly, exactly. As a person with your average in cricket, uh, the stra do you typically play a strategy of the long game? Are you fine with – Are you do you feel more comfortable in like a point-for-point point battle or do you feel more comfortable in a close-quickly type of match? Uh, I'm not going to give away uh, my strategy where everyone can hear. So uh, – but I will say – Don't worry. Not everyone's watching. Just, <laughs> just like 800 people. So I will say as uh, Jules – look at this. He is feeling yeah. it. That's six – triples in a row and that's what having Jules Van Dongen on your team can really do is that in the last leg decider when you really need someone to step up he's done everything absolutely going to the last leg it's seven triples in a row coming up big the big player coming up big and and that's what uh he is there for so Wait, to, to answer sorry. your question Sean yeah. uh I I obviously in most matches uh everyone thinks I'm a favorite Right, so you can say I, that absolutely. So I I use that to my advantage. As the game gets longer, I should always win. You know, obviously I yep. don't always win, but uh, yeah, I, I like my chances in a in a longer game than in a shorter game. Now, if there's someone, you know, I'm playing someone and it's close, I'm gonna take my my hero shot because that could change the outcome of a game. Every time I shoot the hero shot and miss it, I always uh, sing, I will be your hero, baby. Oh my but it's to my opponent so that they yeah. get thrown off for their next leg, too. Yeah. That's what you got to do. I will never forget that now. All right. Look at this. Sun, Sunshine State Santa trying to scratch them back into the match, but five marks is just not going to do it with... <laughs> With uh, Jules breathing the fire that he is. Seven in a row. Oh. Yeah, it stops at seven. It's the commentator jinx. It, trust me, I've been here. It's not your fault. It's it not your a fault. lot, right? It does. Okay, good. But there's a lot of times where you're just right because it is the best players that we're going to have in this room, so you expect them to hit when they need to. Like nine mark here for Sugar Shane. Like, Look at that. See? I mean, when they're the best players in the room – and you expect them to hit when they need to hit. I mean, what a time for that. 
that that had to happen. Yes. And th this is a little bit of pressure. That's a great last start for Mike because if he only hits a single there, uh, the whole dynamic of this match shifts. Totally agree. And, and this is where uh, Nick is going to try to load up the 15s here. He's been a little bit off in this match, but now's the time for just him to do what he does best, and that's not hit a four mark. He's better than that. You know, it is day one. They started at 9 a.m., which for the Floridians is 10 a.m. Um, and then you got Johnny Lackey here. I think it's actually earlier in the in the morning for them. Absolutely, and I like how Johnny just didn't even look at the 15 because once again, you you've got the bigger number as a five mark there forces six 15. So. Uh, great, great match. A oh, great shot. Great shot. Yeah, because the math now, Kenny Doyle needs to hit at least seven. Seven 15s. for him, yeah. All right. This is where I expect this. It might be over right here. Close the 15th and go straight at the bowl. Oh. He's going to stay there again. No? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. He's not happy with the four mark, but he did the bare minimum of his job there. Absolutely. St Kenny's telling them to shut the shut the 19s mm -hmm. and 16s down because they're, they're uh, six pulls down right now. So uh, just to give him the shot, I'm sure that's that's what he's going to try to do here. Do you think he said loud enough? Like, plus it's Mike Carter. You know, he's definitely not going to hit three bulls. <laughs> no. <laughs> you ever do that? No. Say it loud enough for for your opponent to hear right there. Uh, well, actually, yes. Depending on who <laughs> I'm playing, I, I have done that actually. Oh, look at this from Mike Carter. There it is, Dynamite closes it out. They do it against the throw, too. But great job. Jules Van Dongen played with Mike Carter a lot last year at TOC, and they were very successful, so that makes perfect sense. And look at this. We got, ooh, man. I look so bald in that picture. But there's our commentary team. That's me, Sean Green. I'm the one with the hair on the right-hand side, and I'm joined by Danny Baggish. The good-looking guy on the right. Exactly. Wow, look at that guy. Man, here is Matt Graf, uh, Wisconsinite. And his follow-through for Wait the top up. level of darts might be the worst of all time, but he actually fires that dart into the dartboard way harder than it looks like he does. He 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 looks like last leg decider, the loser side, by the way. Oh, okay. Oh, a good match then. He he actually looks like he throws it, and it's like a Spider-Man release. Oh, he it, it just he, he just twists his yeah, wrist, just like, turns his wrist over. Wow, it works though. I'm telling you. I feel like that's tough to control. That was Ray Morgan right there who just shot. So we're going to have the South Dakotans from the Wooden Nickel taking on the Wisconsinites here. Here's Carlos Saxby. One of the more unknown Wisconsinites because he does not play in the CSC Challenger Series. But look at that USA Darts hat. That thing is beautiful looking. We're live on Partners Promoting Darts and USA Darts Productions. And we want to give a huge shout out to the rest of our production team besides the two of us uh, who are doing the easy job for the entire week. Absolutely. And that is, of course, uh, the great Will Stewart, who is on the production side of things. And then in the background, doing all of our social media and editing, that's uh, Nick Youngbuck, Pink Hair, Dorachi Teixeira, and, of course, the amazingly talented Jen Mounts. Yes, yes. Shout out to Nick, uh, especially. Uh, pink Hair, uh, obviously, breast cancer awareness. Yep. Um, I love the support there. And then uh, Jen, what she does, unbelievable. And then, yeah, Will. A.K.A. Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Ah, uh, that was that was great. That was, I couldn't believe that. Great dart there from John Pilgrim. His uh, dart nickname is Pigworm. Pigworm. That's actually true. Okay. Here is the legend, Mr. Wes White. It's it's good to see. I haven't seen Wes in a while, and everything he's been through is yep. um, absolutely wonderful to see him here still competing. And uh, what a guy. Well, we saw him at NDA. Uh, not this past year, but the year before that on Team USA. And uh, it was the just after COVID NDA. So there were two Team USAs, and they played each other in the finals. And Wes was on the underdog squad, and they came out victorious. And it was uh, it was really cool to see because he hit that winning dart. Um, and it meant a lot. You could tell in our interview afterwards, it, it meant a lot to those guys to, to support Wes and everything he's been through. I get it. it was emotional, I'm sure. Uh, what a moment that was for him and everyone. Well, here we go. Last leg decider here. This is Ray Morgan for the match. That'll help. There it is. Double, double. Even points it at the end because why not? And that'll do it for that one. It sends the Wisconsinites to the two loss sides. So they'll go to the last chance. 
and the North Dakotans, or South Dakotans, I apologize greatly to them, will be taking on uh, Jeremiah Millar, Jesse Gore, and Leonard Gates. So here we go. This is a last chance matchup we got going on in this one, and we just talked to some Wisconsinites, so here are some more Wisconsinites. As I am looking here. Actually, these are two Wisconsinite teams who had to play each other in the very first round, and now they're here at this moment. Uh, this is one of the things that you hate to do, is you, sh you drive hundreds of miles just to play your friends. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but how often does that happen? A well, lot. When you're, f when you're both good at darts, like and all your friends are really good at darts, you're going to eventually play them. This is the one bracket that is not full uh, completely with either 15 or 16 teams. This one only has 11. Uh, so it is, of course, the no cap. And while well, the three of us could dominate this no cap, if, <laughs> if just you, me, and Will, we're just we'll take on the winners, see what happens, you know. Absolutely. Uh, we'll even have two losses if they want to do that. I have Danny Bags on my team. I'm fine with that. Whatever they want to do, I'm in. Here's Jamie Cop. Did we just get a boom goes to Wisconsinite that we missed there from Porky? Oh, uh, from focus? Garrett. Oh, Garrett did that. From of course, Garrett. Garrett did that. Yeah. What a throw he has, Garrett. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And are we gonna have a back to back on the 19 here? Oh, he stayed oh. there. Well, there we go. Jamie Cop gets seven of them. I like that. And here is Porky. He's awake for this one. Steve Hilger. Well, we'll see what he throws here. See if he is awake just yet. I'm going to expect... Well, it's not going to be enough. This, of course, is... This is where, like, the pressure of this is wonderful, right? Last chance bracket. Race to one. And in this type of format, depending on how the match goes... You might only throw once or twice in the entire match. Absolutely. Uh, and and uh, in this uh, no cap, you, it wouldn't be surprising to see someone open up seven mark white horse and then if, yeah. you're, if you're going last, you're going you're throwing right. at the 15s. It, I talked to Megan Watson out there um, before we got started, and they lost their first match, and she's like, yeah, I threw once in the first leg. I threw twice in the second leg, and we were like, okay, well, great, thanks. Yeah, that's thanks for tough. for letting me play. That's tough. Here's Jake Smith. I love to see Jake here. I met him at NDA. He was on the same team as the West White uh, winning USA uh, team that year. And here's our first look at Scuba Steve. Scuba Steve, uh, the first person that I threw a nine dart on in the <laughs> Booyah Cup. Unlucky Steve. Who was the second person? Uh, I can't remember. You only remember the first. After that, you know, you just... The joke was that you've obviously done it multiple times. Yeah. I, that, yeah, <laughs> I stopped counting after one. <laughs> How about the other day, MVG, um, almost getting nine darters? And I've two to three legs. For fun. Two out of three <laughs> legs, yeah. Doing for them different directions. Oh, my gosh. Who hits a 171 in the second round? Like, just just to, like, eh, let's mix it up and leave the big fish. You never know. All right, here's Jamie Cop. Garrett did not do what he just did in the last round. That's how you follow up a nine mark, typically. Definitely how I do it. The one time I've hit a nine mark, I definitely uh, did not follow it up. Madison, I am so sorry. South Dakota will forever be better than North Dakota was the message she just sent me. I don't think she put it in the, cat, in the chat, though, so sorry for ma making that out loud. Look at this, Jamie Cop. Big boom goes the Wisconsinite from Jamie. Yeah, that last game, or one game uh, in this side, and what a time to hit that. That's a nine mark apiece for both teams, but that one, timelier. Very much timelier. Oh, man. Are we going to back-to-back? No. Way to go, Porky. Big last. I've actually I, – I, actually, I was throwing with his darts earlier. And yeah. I have no clue how he throws so accurately with those things. Well, he used to throw bar darts for so long. Yeah. I, I just don't understand. Have you ever tried to throw Rams 9.2 gram darts? No, but I have thrown Stephen Bunting's uh, steel tip darts. Yep. And it the super smooth ones or the the new ones, the like the 12 uh, gram ones? Uh, the super smooth ones, and I don't know how you could possibly do that. No, I don't. I don't know how they do it. No, I'm, like, like that meeting with with his company had to be like, what do you want? And he's like, uh, I want a, the lightest dart you can make, and uh, with no grip whatsoever. And they were like, what? Target, by the way. It, was it Target at that time? Yep. Is it still Target? Yes, it is. Teammate of mine. Here we go. Here's the name drop of Target. Sorry. You know, it's a teammate of mine. You. Yes, and here we are as <laughs> Steve is going to try to close that 16 as the 20s is blocked. And, and he, he does. Hits it. 
Scuba Steve. Dang you. What? That was on, Scuba Have you not seen Big Big Daddy? Yeah, Scuba Steve. Yeah, and I said dang you instead of you know cuz we're we're live. It's only like 12:28 my time, so 11:28 local. Gotcha. So you can't cuss yet. No, I understand. So uh, another situation there. I know it's the last game, and they're they're probably saying, "Oh, you gotta get all the points." Yeah. But I would have taken the shot to close the twenty, give uh, Porky the six bulls. But Jamie's gonna shut the fifteen down here. Yeah, and Jamie's been thrown so well in this leg too that it's hard to to take the chance of giving him that opportunity. You know. Absolutely. Is he gonna stay there? He. Sh that's he an awesome second dart. Fire. With the way his darts, they have a little bit of a loft to him. So for him to be able to to find that second dart into the trouble 15 after the first dart was, had to be a huge blocker. Absolutely, it was. He right. didn't even move. He didn't. One hole into the triple 10, uh, it's it's hard not to move there, and he didn't, and, and just drilled it. So this is another opportunity to get rid of the 20s, right? Yeah, no matter how many bulls you hit, you need at least one, and that's what he did. There it goes. Now it's 6-3. to three. Big huge. darts. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that is a pressure shot here, and it's going to be on Bob Anderson. Bob, a veteran of the game. Oh, yeah. I don't see him missing this. That first start's important. Danny, why do you do that? Well, and it's that first start, right? If you miss the first start, it really makes it uneasy. And now he's going to give Jake Smith a look at this. And Jake more than capable of closing this out, maybe even two darts. Absolutely. And then it would just kind of put icing on the cake on why you shut the number down to yep. give your opponent the pressure. Oh, and, of course, you hit the double ball on the last start yeah. just to make you upset. Absolutely. He he really wants the double in the first two darts, so no pressure, or put him just below the double. That'll work. You can yep. just walk it on over. Absolutely. Oh, oh no. no. Can't do it now. We won't say what he said there, but he did say, he said, darn, darn it. it. Yep. Darn it. All right, Scuba Steve for the match, and the Wisconsinite gets it done. So the Wisconsinites move on against the Wisconsinites and Jake. Where's Jake from? Uh, he is a South Dakotan. Make sure you get that one. That right. was right. I made sure. If I know better. Madison would tell you. Well, absolutely. You like, yeah. And you're going to see, this is what Garrett's going to do is just punish himself, right? Mm. Do you, do, you uh, do this if you lose on like a, say you miss double 20, three darts straight, and the, your opponent takes out like a 112, and you sit there. Do you sit there and try and throw the tops there for as long as you can to see how no. many you hit in a row? No. It just punishes yourself, right? Yeah, well, no. you're going to hit it. Yeah, you, you missed it in that moment. It's different pressure afterwards, you know what I mean? You, you're obviously going to hit it, so. All right, so it looks like we got some matches going to be coming your way next. It is going to be a last chance match between Carlos, John, and Matt. So that is uh, Carlos Saxby, John Pilgrim, and Matt Graff, who we just saw in the previous match. And they're taking on the Henzies and Ken Rip. That's going to be a darn good one there. Who did, they, who did the Henzies and Ken Rip lose to to get into the – They lost to Millar, okay. Millar's team. Okay. And that's the other match that we're going to have coming our way, uh, which I believe is the fourth place match. No, it's to get there. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be uh, Corey Jensen, Ray Morgan, and Wes White uh, taking on Jeremiah Millar, Jesse Gore, and Leonard Gates. But it looks like we're going to get uh, the team of – I love it. Just want to let you know, Stowe. Uh, I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, Still, Bunce is one of my all-time favorite humans. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get this last chance matchup right here. And I mean, this is for seventh place, bud. Seventh place. The Henzies and Ken Rip could get seventh place in this bracket. There's only 11 teams. What does that tell you? That tells you that this bracket is absolutely stacked. Nuts. It's a nuts Absolutely bracket. stacked. And if I had the opportunity to play with Will Stewart and Sean Green, we would at least take eighth. Oh, for sure. I mean, like, at least top 11. I we wouldn't come in last place. You wouldn't let us come in last place, would you? You'd yell at us too much. 
No, I wouldn't let us come in last place, but you guys will let us come in last place. This oh, is man. a triples event, not a singles event. <laughs> hey, I'm, my job is to throw twice, okay? you guys, <laughs> Your guys' job is to get me to that point. I can hit a couple bowls. I actually thought that Maloney was playing with Millar and Gates, um, but that's not until Monday. So I was about to say, I've not seen Mike Maloney. Is he not here yet? Well, uh, I think he got confused. Uh, I think he showed up to a venue where they had online boards, <laughs> and uh, I did message him. Uh, he's actually on his way soon uh, for the live event, and, uh, yeah, expectations aren't real high for him. He uh, thought he could just play in Illinois? Yeah, that, but, I mean, well, it's given, right? Uh, well, why wouldn't you want to play in a live event if you're Mike? Hey, listen, the best Deshera uh, here, and that's uh, Daddy D, Dominic Deshera, and Jim Nolte, uh, his partners are right now uh, playing for that fifth place match in Division I. Uh, they take on the winner of Abby Spot, Corey Bartz, and Jalen Romero, and a couple of my friends from Ohio. Uh, that's Miss Olivia Terry, uh, Damian Lofton, and Tyler Holmes. Tyler Holmes actually, uh, uh, no, that's a different Holmes. Who's, who's Dominic and Jim playing with? Uh, they're playing Steve McDowell. Steve McDowell. Yep. Yeah, he's a, he's a really good player. He is. I've, he's he's a good player. I've uh, I love their jersey that they're wearing because they are making fun of uh, Steve with the jersey that they have. It's the bus driver jersey that you'll see there. It's bright <laughs> yellow and black. It's wonderful. Nice. When you have friends like the the friends that we all do, we don't need enemies, buddy. No, no, no. Of course not. So stop hating in the chat. No, I'm kidding. You guys have been wonderful, guys. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know who you have in this one. Uh, great matchup between the. Look at this throw. Tell me about this. It's Spider-Man. I don't care. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I talk about it often enough, and he loves it when I do. Um, but he's a fantastic shot. He's the only person I could ever say could throw like that and be consistent enough uh, to have the success that he does on a dartboard. Um, yeah, because I, I couldn't do it. That, that's uh, that's For him to master it and, and to, to throw even a th – 4-0 or 5-0 or whatever the case may be is is unbelievable. I was watching him throw earlier, and, and I was in awe like this. He doesn't really feel like that, does he? He does, and he does it well. Yep. No, it's crazy. There's Mike Maloney in the chat uh, saying hi, but he didn't tell me tell us where he is. Uh, of course, we got uh, Austin Braswell in there saying, don't worry, I got last. You were fine. <laughs> well, there you go. We just have to play the last place team. If uh, we beat them, then we would have definitely not gotten last place. Look at Rick rocking it with no hat. Uh, he looks so what different. What a guy. Who would have thought that he had, like, the, the shaved clean cut look? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And he, and he shaved his mustache and, and goatee and everything. Yeah. It's like he's going to be on camera this week or something, and he knew it. Absolutely. There's Ken Rip. Uh, Ken Rip, unfortunately, had the distinction of losing to Tyler Henze in the loser side of Division Two. so Tyler Henze took him out. So he's going to be able to trash talk him the entire week long and whenever he sees him in person. It's like Uncle Ken, you know? Absolutely. Took him out. Tyler. What a good player Tyler is as well. This is just a good team. You know what I love it's about Tyler Henze? Uh, his dart nickname is Han Solo, <laughs> which he was born uh, with his with only his right hand. Yeah. Um, his dad did not chop it off like we tell him or tell you that that happened. Um, but uh, he is 18 years old. Let me repeat that. He is 18 years old. He's six foot seven. He is by far um, one of the tallest – people in the entire venue yeah um he might be the overall like biggest person in the venue like he could be a left tackle in really? the nfl yeah. is like the size of of uh tyler henzi and this is the great thing about darts bud is that you have all different shapes and sizes and uh genders um in each one of these levels that is just um and it doesn't make a difference no you're absolutely right you're it's absolutely just right. who is consistent with their throw Agreed. And this is uh, this is the one game. and uh, For seventh place. Seventh place. And Rick Henze wins the bowl. That's S the other fun thing about these brackets, bud, is that so much pressure is on. Uh, sorry to cut you off there. No, you're all right. So much pressure is on to um, get to at least third place because they only pay out third, second, and first in these events. And it's a $50 buy-in to get into this. But uh, third place gets $384, which is a great payday. You get no, uh, more than double your money back. Second place, 582, and this is just in this no-cap bracket. This is actually the lowest of the payouts. 
and then first is 975. So splitting a little bit, $325 is, is not a bad day uh, for day one. And also, if you're in that supercharger, you automatically get a share of that $50,000 too. Yeah, it's not a bad day. And uh, as Rick opens up with five, one and more there. But no, not a bad, bad day at all. I think that's, uh, you play any triples event in the country, that is probably the best paying one. So hats off again to the PPD. Yeah, giving away over $1.9 million this week. Sean Green, say that one more time. $1.9 million. That's unbelievable. $1.9 million. Yeah. I mean, when we did this last year because it was the first tournament champion since COVID, um, where everyone was together, uh, they gave away well over $2 million in prizes. Uh, we've mentioned it a couple times. Jules Van Dongen last year walked out with over $24,000 hmm. for the week. Now, he had to earn that because these are tough brackets. These are the highest level of players. I think this is uh, this event, the Booyah Cup, now that we have with the level of players that play in that. Of course, the championship dart circuit um, for Steel Tip. But, I mean, these are the, those are the three premier events we got, I think, right now. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, Sean. Uh, I just can't help to watch Matt throw I know. and just bang in a seven Dude. mark. And he has a finish, and I told him this earlier, when I watch him throw, it's like, ta-da. Yep. Like his hand just twists, and he's like, ta-da. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's showing you his great round. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. Guys, Matt Graff can do that throw. He is the only person that can. Do not repeat that throw at any point in time. I don't care that he's in the no cap and he belongs here. Do not ever repeat that throw. I Rickenzie, agree. big easy, great throw. Listen, this is uh, I I don't like smooth. Yeah, absolutely. I don't I don't like the last two throws where uh, they they haven't tried to shut that twenty down, being up a hundred points. I I feel like a, against a team like Rick and Ken and Tyler, man, you gotta get those twenties away. So I Especially expect John to do it leg. now. Yeah, absolutely. You get rid of it first here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that way you get those first two darts at it. Yeah. Did the bare minimum, no matter what does on dart three. Trip nineteen right here, John. Oh. That'll work. Absolutely. So let's see what uh, Han Solo can do. The 18-year-old who's only been playing darts for three years total. He is still in Division Two of the CSC Challenger Series, which is a race to nine all cricket on Wednesday nights. And uh, he has the highest average in Division Two with a 4.8 plus average. Now, last this on, on Wednesday, he did have an off week. He only added a 4.5 something average, but uh, ended up pulling it out, and he'll be playing for the fourth-place match uh, here next week. Again, Rich Turbins. Yeah, uh, he's uh, 4.5, and we're saying off-match, 4.5. Yep. All right, here's Ken Ritt. Really good. Ken also shot phenomenal in the CSE Division II uh, this season, losing only to Tyler Henze on the loser side. But when we had him on stream, I mean, he could not miss. So if he finds his game, um, those three are going to be very tough. The problem is is that it's not happening quick enough with Carlos. Uh, again, one of the more underrated Wisconsinites stepping up here. Yeah, I think he's going to take the shot at the trip 18 first. Just kidding. He's going to go 19, <laughs> and he's going to have to stay there now. You have to stay he's there. He's heroing it. No. Uh, I wanted to see it. Yeah, not like you know having the big number. And I don't know if they think this way, but you know you miss miss the trip seven with the trip seven first start. I feel like you're obligated to have to stay there. I just know this guy's stepping up. Yeah, absolutely. And, I and he hasn't hit two triples first yet. Man, and that first start's way off for Rickenzie. Those first two are way off for Rickenzie. I mean, I'm just happy I hit 118 here, but that is nowhere close to where he is aiming at that that triple. Ooh, yeah, and that, that might be the match right there. Yeah, he's he's a bit off, isn't he? Yeah, when, when your uh, number one player throws a one mark there at that time and just really allows John to, to do what John does best, and that's close some stuff out. Yeah, great first start. His follow-through is so perfect. Go 17, yeah. Smart shot. Go to 19 now, I would. That's – but – Look, that's not necessarily a bad shot because uh, six seventeens here only puts them at three seventy nine. So they can't. I always say, don't don't let them close your number and hit two triples to get ahead in points. And that's what he did. So he made sure that he couldn't do that. 
And he's only going to get one chance to score on the 17s with the X on it. Absolutely. He does score a little bit, but first start here, close the 17s, right? And then load move 16s? The, no, you load up the 19s. You got you Well, with the points, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And again, they make these decisions before they even step to the line what they're going to do. He's going to stay there and close it. And now 19s. Just want to get one there. Takes takes the, the shot out of Ken's hand with the 9 mark getting ahead and closing, so... Uh, I'm sure you wanted more there. It gets frustrating when you when you go for the big number and then miss, but I've done that so many times in steel tip, it's unbelievable. Oh, I mean, well, it's is it a mental thing where you know you hit that 98 times out of 100, so you don't even think about it? Is that when that that little lack of focus is that when that happens, or is it when it's just the pressure of making sure you get that one dart? I think it's just making sure you get that one dart. Uh, good strategy there, Carlos. Going double first. Mike Maloney has an effect on everybody. A little Shanghai there. <laughs> Never hurt anyone. But, yeah, if Rick, if Rick needed a nine there. Nine would have been the only thing to really kind of keep him in this one, and that is a brutal last start. Give him 11. That <laughs> tail whipped the flight into the 11. That's the third worst feeling in darts. Absolutely. And, Sean, I don't know if you know this, but in the in the last, this is the third last game decider, and it uh, uh, it is on pace to be the third team to win going second. I did not know that, but look at this, John Pilgrim, great darts, fifteens. Yeah, absolutely. Kill shot. Yep. Oh, I was ready to give it to him too. He he wanted to set off some dynamite there, I think. That he did. Tyler, all he can do is set up set off some dynamite. He's not going to do that. Good last. Good last. There's still eight bulls behind. It's it's kind of in the writing here, but you never know. Never know. Like that match earlier with Jules, we thought they would run away with and uh, squeaked it out. Look at this from Matt Graff. With a flick of the wrist, and he gets the win. Get it, Spider-Man. <laughs> Hey, that'll do it. The Wisconsinites move on, take out the Minnesotans of Ken, Rick, and Tyler. And uh, there's the dancing wonder himself, Mr. Leonard Gates. Dancing. It. Hey, he's got a little groove going on. Absolutely. All the time. He's got those wireless headphones in. Usually he wears the, the big guys when he's warming up so that people don't bother him. Is that is that his typical thing? And then you walked right up to him and... Well, I'm Danny Baggis, Sean. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> but you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. He, uh, Danny Baggis, Sean. Uh, I love you so much. That was wonderful. He, uh, he does. He, he just likes to practice. You know, love him or hate him. He, he just, he's here to to play darts. He's here to. This is job. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and he's darn good at it. That he is. So why would he change up what he does? I. I get it from from every perspective there, right? But from the main perspective is. Uh, you're successful for a reason. So here we go. This is the uh, – oh, there you go. They're still perfect. This is the one lost side of the bracket, and it looks like uh, the perfection here of uh, the team of Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard. This is leg number two, and this is the only format that I will always tell you that I hate. Um, I Why do like that? the fact that it's 701, but other than that, I, I hate open bowl. I hate open out for this level. Uh, I don't disagree. Because I don't disagree. typically whoever goes first is almost guaranteed to win the leg unless something crazy happens like this uh, where perfection might be achieved here. Don't, hit, don't miss low. He uh, gets look it. At that. Perfect for a triples team in 701. Uh, wow. That wasn't a short joke if you watched this over, Jeremiah. I apologize. 14 darter. That'll do it. That will do it. And uh, But, you know, uh, I, I think – with the open bull, I, th I think you're right. It, it does favor the first player, but um, I, do you think they do it for time as well? It, it still makes for it, sure. you know, it still it makes it going good, run smoothly, and so forth. Absolutely, but I'm going to make a different argument. If yeah. there are only going to be 16 teams in this no cap anyway, mm -hmm. and they're already right now at the like they're running low in the sixth place, fifth place match, and right. it's only been going on for three hours almost. Yeah. Um, I. Who cares, right? You know, the, the, they should be playing at least double out and split bowl. 
and I like Absolutely. double in, double out, split bowl for for soft tip for this I, level. I don't disagree. Uh, so they're so good at taking uh, advice. Uh, maybe someone should should offer it up. I mean, I, I think they know kind of how we feel in the situation. Yeah. We've we've said this before, but I also think that I understand that their perspective on it is uh, it's the way they've done things since the start. Uh, I think that if it was up to them completely, uh, they would almost eliminate the 01 out of it. Yeah. Uh, you see the majority of it is all cricket. Absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I know one person that agrees with you. That's Stowe Bunts. I love Stowe. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, as you see, uh, Jeremiah Millar warming up there. Our next match that we're going to have is going to be Kenny Doyle, Nick, Celepic, Sugar Shane Johnson taking on Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard Gates. But we're going to take a quick ad break for the first time. We are live here in Kansas City, Missouri at TOC 2023. Sean Green, Danny Baggish will be back with more coverage right after this. into darts but you're not sure how we can definitely help with that we're a to z darts.com and we've been a dart specialty store for over 30 years we have the greatest variety of darts in the country but don't worry we can narrow down that selection for you whether you're a complete beginner or a full-on expert we developed our own colonial brand to offer an inexpensive line of darts dartboards and accessories so you can get into the game without breaking the bank join our amazing community by going to azdarts.com So today we're gonna to learn how to throw a dart. In each turn of darts, you get three darts to throw. So with all three darts in your non-throwing hand, step up to the toe line. If you're right-handed, put your right foot on the line, lefties, left foot. This isn't baseball, so you want the same foot forward as your throwing arm, not the opposite. Usually the toe line is set so that your foot will be right up to the front edge of the line, not behind it. This toe line is also known as the Aki. The position of your front foot uh, is usually at an angle to the line, to some degree. Your back foot should be a little bit wider than shoulder width away from the front. Put one dart in your throwing hand while holding on to the other two darts in your other hand. Looking at the dartboard, focus in on a spot you want to hit. To start, let's look right at the bullseye. As you stare at your target, lean forward, bring the dart up and draw it back towards your eye. Throw the dart by moving your hand and forearm towards your target, keeping everything else as still as possible. Hold your position while transferring the second dart to your throwing hand and repeat your throw. Once you've thrown all three darts, your turn is complete and you can retrieve your darts from the board. And yes, it will take some practice to get the dart to go where you're aiming. It's not as easy as the pros make it look. But with practice, I guarantee your accuracy will get better and I tell you, there's nothing better than having three darts go exactly where you wanted them to. If you've already been throwing darts and have had success with something slightly different than what I've just explained, great, fantastic. As long as it works for you, no problem. Just keep in mind that any extra movement in your throw will make it harder for you to hit your target consistently. Uh, as a beginner, just try to get all three darts to land in the same area. As you build your confidence, you can narrow down your target 
getting all three darts to land in one number, say, like the 20s. Welcome back to Kansas City, Missouri for the 10th Annual Tournament of Champions brought to you by Partners Promoting Darts Live here at the KCI Expo Center. I'm Sean Green, joined by Danny Baggish in the booth, and we do have the fourth place match here, or I guess the uh, one out of the king seat for the one-loss bracket and uh, two great teams. Yeah, this is uh, uh, arguably a lot of people probably had this as two of the top teams in this oh absolutely bracket, you know what i mean so it's gonna be a good match uh this is the cricket 01 cricket correct absolutely the 01 leg is going to be uh 701 uh, open and open out full bowl uh, we just saw the team of jeremiah millar we saw the l tail end of jeremiah millar's team uh throw a perfect leg there of 701 which when you have jeremiah millar leonard gates and jesse gore on the same team that's not a huge shock no it isn't it isn't and uh, it's still hard to do, but uh, they definitely did it. Their worst player averages a 4.94 on that team, and they're in the one-loss side of the bracket. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I shot a 4.94 once. Yeah, but that was probably after your first three darts. All right, so Jesse here, they're going first. <laughs> um, going first in the – this is a huge advantage for their team, uh, going first obviously in any match, but – in this particular side, cricket 01 cricket, if you go first and you lose, you're going first in the 01. Yep. Right? But if you go first and win, all the pressure is on the, the opposing team in that 01 game. And only a miss of a bull here or there can, uh, can make a match. Nick is struggling. He, he has been, and that's why uh, they have found their, themselves in this position because they do have one of the most consistently talented team across the – Look at this from Leonard Gates. <laughs> Goes double bull on dart two. And uh, Maya's wondering what the heck he just did there, but he's just going to high-five him and move on. <laughs> yeah. You can't. You cannot get away from that reaction, Maya. We have that on <laughs> video, buddy. Right now he's, he's like, I was wondering what you were doing right there. Jeremiah Millar is a, a absolute um, student of the game. He typically maths it perfectly for whatever he needs to do, and he plays – the advantages and the averages every single time. So when he when you when you perplex him, 
uh, with a dart. It was definitely not um, the textbook dart to throw there. What you said, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. No, it was great because I, I followed you all the way through there until the last four minutes of your... Fair. Yeah. Good shot, anyway, uh, Sean's by himself now. I just <laughs> fired Danny. Um, bring in someone else. Um, no, I'm kidding. Anyway, Jesse Gore stepping up here. Jesse Gore from Lakeland, Florida. So this is actually uh, Floridians playing against Floridians here. At least one playing against two. With Nick Selepic and Kenny Doyle from the Kissimmee, Florida area. Not too far from Lakeland. Uh, I'm, I'm actually close to I work in Lakeland, but uh, I'm, I'm in Haines City. But uh, we're all within 30, 45 minutes from each other. Do you guys throw darts often against each other? Uh, yeah, I see, I see him a lot. Jesse, that is. Uh, Nick and Kenny, not so much. Double, 16? He went for the triple, like a real dart player. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, I play with Gates a lot, Yep. obviously, right? Uh, that's probably the only part of his game that frustrates me is, is he's good enough to hit it, but just shut the 16 down there. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no reason to put any more pressure on your opponent, especially in this type of event. If you're playing singles, you do whatever you want, Leonard. Uh, but when you have a partner that is used to a certain style or format and you're doing kind of the opposite, sometimes that can really throw off your partner. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that'll work anyway for Jeremiah Millar. Only a 4.13 from him. I hate the fact that the averages are hidden the whole time. You know, that's a good storyline throughout a, a leg or something like that. Do you like seeing your average the whole time, or do you like it hidden? Uh, either way, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I like the average being up when I'm playing singles so my opponent can see my what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, I don't like it when I'm playing doubles with someone because I don't want to, them to see what they're doing, like right. my partner. Fair. Right? So if I ever set up a match, I'm setting it up as a combined average because I want them to know that it's a team thing. So no matter what you're doing, we're going to either play well or not play well together. All right, I'm going to ask you a very expertise question here. At what point uh, throughout this leg, if you are the second team, do you start shooting at the triples? Uh, if your opponents are perfect throughout? Uh, that's a great question. So you, you, have to, you, you would have to do it immediately. So uh, immediately, if, if they wanted to throw a perfect game, I, I, th I believe Gates would have to open up throwing at a triple at some point. Right, because you just go hat trick. If you go uh, 180, 180, that only puts you at 191. So technically... I know the 501 answer to this, and you can throw a hat trick in the first uh, round. Mm. If your opponent throws another hat trick after that, you have to throw at least a 170 to leave yourself a finish on open out. Um, so, uh, in this situation, I don't know if it's the exact same math. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, you're, you're incorrect with what you said, but we'll just go with it. I'm uh, not. But yeah. So, if you throw a 501, that's 351. It, you said you have to at least throw a 170, that would leave 181. Right, so you have to throw a 171. Uh, we have to throw the 180 at the second round then. Sorry about Correct. that. Correct, that's all right. <laughs> My bad. That's so why you I'm here you get to throw a hat trick first. <laughs> yes, yes. And absolutely. then you can take the chance. So in the 701, you would have to immediately throw the 160 or 170 right away. I forgot that you're good at math. I just, <laughs> again, if I sound confident, no one else is going to know the difference until I have someone who knows math in my uh, in the booth next to me. Right, so if, you throw the, if, if Gates would have opened up 170, and then went 180, 180. That puts them at 171. Fair. Which is an out in open out. Correct. All right, so Van is still here with Sugar Shane, Kenny, and Nick. Another hat trick here will do. He doesn't need to do anything different than that with open out. You're absolutely right. And he does exactly what he needs to do. All Jeremiah can do is hit a hat trick right behind because 85 is the exact same thing as leaving 55. Some people like to shoot the, the 180 there just to kind of put the pressure on them and, you know, hey, I just hit a 180. Yeah. What do you do here, Sean? I go 9-bowl. That is the only answer. That's a weird, weird That is way mega weird. Hey, he I mean, hit he hit it. the dead center of the 9, so hats off to him. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is the wrong way to do that. Uh, I guess if you're an expert at darts, like 
these gentlemen are, and you know you're going to hit that single nine, whatever. But you mentioned earlier, how often do you hit the big number? Yeah. Or I, do you I, miss the big number? I never. Yeah, I, I always go nine bull there as well. Because at least if you hit a double or a triple there of the nine, or if you miss one way or the other, you still leave a one dart finish or at least a finish opportunity. But if you miss that single nine on dart two, uh, oops, you just busted. Yep. And I did not see who won that diddle there, so we will Kenny. all be surprised. Kenny won the diddle. Kenny, he was in, yeah, he was in the double bowl, uh, one hole in, and uh, Gates was one hole out. So the one thing that we've seen in this format is it has not really made – a bit dif of difference who goes first and second. We've seen both situations really pan out quite evenly overall, which is kind of different than what you would expect. But this start here from Kenny is important. He's looking at the 19s right away. Is he going for the white horse? No, he goes back. Boom goes the dynamite there for Sunshine State Santa to get this leg started. And you just expect Leonard to follow right here. All 18s? Yeah, absolutely. And I almost expect him to hit at least seven. That's a tough block dart. Now he definitely hits a nine. Dang it. You were Just right. remember, I played with him for I a long time. I forgot that you're good at this. <laughs> this is where, this is where, as Shane, he, I, I wonder, you know, he forces himself to know that he has to hit with playing with, you know, with the team he's on and who he's playing against. When you're the when you're the player that is, uh, I don't you know I don't want to sound rude the lowest man on the team right. Well, everyone knows who that per it's the person who goes third. Yeah, it's the person that goes third, right? So when you're that player, there's so much more pressure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So. It and it typically will come down to your your third player, and what they can do, especially in certain math positions. You're going to be the one to get that first look at the bowl, um, and the pressure is entirely on you there at that point. Especially if your two higher level players are doing their job and you are you already know going into it you're the liability and then you end up being the liability. Uh, trust me, I've been there many times. You've never been in this position, but uh, it is the worst position to be in. I understand. No, you I don't. don't. No, you're right. I don't understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish Jesse would have just shut the 20 down there. Uh, he, they were up 58 points. Sh shut the 20 down there. Even if you shut it down with all three darts, he can't go 6 17s and get the lead. Look at this. Kenny Doyle, a one mark. I don't know how often I say that out loud, but it is very, very rare. It is rare. And I've heard it twice, which is even more rare. And you can't leave Leonard open doors because he just walks right through them. Boom goes the dynamite. Leonard Gates. That is a game changer. I mean, that's it's a wrap. It's the leg, right? Something shocking has to happen here with misses and hits from the other team for them to stay in this thing. So it looks like they, uh, the team of Millar, Gates, and Gore, who lost in the very first round to, of course, the king seat right now, um, are going to be in prime position here to get back to the third place match. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that shot. No, you got to get rid of the 16s, mind. right? Yeah, you, you're never going to lose there if you, if you just shut the 16 down. Um, and he knows that. He knows that. And now it's just uh, it's wide open again. Yep. You know, if I'm Jesse here, I, I it just puts pressure on your third player. Yeah, it does. I just I'm not even worry about a four it. nine four average, by the way. Yeah, man, <laughs> which is unbelievable. Just just close with the first start. He doesn't. And then. Then point out oh no, place. this is a disaster. That's a disaster. Uh, Kenny Doyle, who is more than capable of hitting nine marks at any time, is a nine mark away from taking complete control of this leg. And I, c I would almost bet everything that I own right now that he will miss the uh, first start. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's. I try to prolong that, was, that statement hey, until he threw the that's first. That's smart, <laughs> smart, because after that first start, he's definitely following it, but. Uh, that's the wrong time to let off the gas with Leonard Gates following you. Aggressive or no? Nope. Not as aggressive as drawn after the 16s, but that's math, right? Correct. But he still leaves the, the nine nine mark shot here to get ahead and close everything down. Yes, you go for it. Yep. Ah, oh, I hate momentum. It's, but 
Sugar might be okay with that type of move. You're absolutely right. We'll find out. No, he's not. He is not okay with that. Not okay at all. Uh, that stopped the momentum completely. You were absolutely correct, and I'm going to say that multiple times this week, <laughs> and I can't wait. <laughs> and Maya's going to take full advantage here. The way he plays, he won't even come off of it. Is he going to come off of it? Oh, moved. Yep, and he hits it. What a time for a nine. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite, Jeremiah Millar, and that is the nail in the coffin. You know, I feel like Shane should have asked Nick and, and Kenny. He's good enough to hit Bef that first before. dart triple. Yeah. yeah. Ask, ask before you approach the line. That way you, 100%. Don't, you don't have to stop. Because you know exactly where you're shooting that first dart, and you know what you're trying to do there. Assume you're going to do it. Absolutely. Just just shut the 15 down here, Jesse. It yep. doesn't matter how many darts. There you go. Now point. Great darts from Jesse Gore. You go double ball, close, close? Um, I mean, you, you could, you know. It's um, Leonard, so yeah. he's not going to miss very often. Right. I think I think that probably would have been the shot uh, that he took. There's going to be two darts here. Never mind. It's going to take at least three. He's wanted to get over a 100-point lead first. There it is, right in the dead center on dart three. Leonard Gates, just a little 6.0 from Soldier. And they do a little handshake. That was the third place match. So uh, the worst that Maya, Leonard, and Jesse Orr can do is third place, which is in the money. So they've made it. They have made the money. And uh, that means that Sunshine State Santa and company moved to the fourth place match where they will take on the winner of uh, Carlos Saxby, Matt Graff, and John Pilgrim, and Corey Jensen, Ray Morgan, and Wes White. So that's another great match heading our way whenever it so chooses to do so. So we're going to go ahead and cut to an interview here between Mark McFadden and the person that interviewed him was Nick Deshera. Oh, it was Danny Baggish. All right, so guys, stay tuned for that interview, and then we'll be back with more action right after the break. Danny Baggish, Sean Green, live in yeah, TOC. Yeah. All right, here with Mark McFadden. First off, how was that drive? Super long, <laughs> 16 hours to be exact. Where are you coming from, Mark? Uh, Rochester, New York. So you decided to drive 16 hours instead of a take a flight. Is there any reason behind that? Because I'm scared of heights, so you tell me. Well, my uh, co-pilot is not a big fan of flying, and personally, I don't want to lose any of my luggage or anything like a bunch of other people have, so I just took the chance with him and just rode it out. <laughs> Fair enough. I actually thought I lost my luggage this morning. Um, welcome. Is this your, this is your first time here? Uh, how are you feeling? A little nervous. Um, I know what to expect because a lot of the people from my area have gone a few times, so they kind of briefed me in, but definitely a little nervous, but I'm ready to go too at the same time. What was your thoughts when you first walked into the Expo Center and you seen this absolutely phenomenal setup? I was pretty taken back. It's super professional, very, very huge, like, I mean, I've been to Chicago, I've been to many other big tournaments, and this one's pretty big and uh, pretty well orchestrated, too, I could say. When you come here, you have everyone, Mike Maloney, Leonard Gates, Jeremiah Millar, a lot of the big hitters. How do you feel you can compete with them? Um, personally, I don't really even look at it like that. I just look at it like I'm going to give it my best and hope it works out. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure it'll work, work out, Mark. Well, listen, we appreciate you coming. On behalf of PPD, USA Darts, and Magic Wear, good luck, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Porky or Steve Hilger? Which one do you prefer? Porky in the dart world. It's got to be. You know, there's too many Steves, and, you know, I'm, I'm done playing. Oh, say, hey, Steve, you know, and 10 people turn around. Porky, that's it.
I'm surprised you didn't say Devin. You know, he's younger. He's the younger version of me. But, you know, I'm, I'm getting old. I got too much gray to be Devin anymore. <laughs> Second time here, Porky. How you feeling? This I'm I'm excited. I mean, I, this is I was hoping it would come back. You know, last year I didn't do it um, just because it wasn't guaranteed it was going to be in person. You know, everybody hears me talk about how much I hate online play. You know, it's just it's a different energy when it's in person. You know, I feed off the my opponent's energy. I feed off the crowd's energy, and you can't do that online. So I'm extremely excited no problem porky without saying you're a favorite over mike maloney with saying you're a favorite over mike maloney uh you just did it just then um no, no absolutely so uh i heard about the kansas city barbecue i haven't been here this is my first time what do you what do you what are the expectations where do i need to go anywhere i like barbecue like second best barbecue in the country sorry nashville takes it but you know kansas city there you got lc's uh jack stacks which is more uh, the, it's pretty good. It's good if you don't, like, you know, have, like, your regular Dickies and all that from whatever area you're from. But, yeah, there's a couple other ones I want to try out. Lakeside is one of them that I've never been to. I've heard nothing but good things. Um, but more importantly, Whataburger has that chili burger this month, man. So my room is right next to the bathroom at this B&B, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it to the test. So I didn't even know there was a Whataburger here man you need to hang out with me more <laughs> <laughs> so ppd is putting on a, a great event uh, obviously and it's unbelievable here uh, the expo center is unbelievable what what is your overall expectation and and how do you feel playing in, into that venue and uh, with, with everyone around and what, what what's the feeling like since i'm not going to be out there uh -huh. you tell me yeah i love it yeah, i mean you've you've been there on the big stage you're you're no stranger to it it's the same exact feeling on a lower level i couldn't imagine being on like a pdc stage but ppd and what they're doing it really showcases uh like the talent that we have here in america for soft tip darts i'll tell you what porky i got the feels when i first walked in um good luck this weekend i appreciate it and uh we'll hit up whataburger absolutely and barbecue <laughs> absolutely yep <laughs>
So, joke was on us. See, uh, Dominic. Um, yeah. There, warming up with uh, Johnny Lackey. But yeah, I just wanted you to know how bad um, that that definitely was. Of course, the first time that I ever posted the first match of the CSC Challenger Series Season 1, uh, I believe I called Kenny Doyle Nick Kenny. Nick Kenny. Okay. Which is a – he's a steel tip player from uh, Wales, correct? He, he is, yes. So, yeah, I thought he was in the CSC, I guess. Yep. They look alike. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not at all. Close. Not at all. All right, so John Pilgrim, uh, I just want to say the way he approaches the board, I've noticed that he kind of just takes a deep breath, looks down, and, and composes himself. Good seven mark there. Ray Morgan has an interesting uh, set to his throw, kind of like a little extra mov motion there. Speaking of interesting, here you go. Get a Spider-Man. And his dart does pop into the dartboard too. It it's it's honestly impressive how hard he throws that dart with that follow through. It's impressive how he hits anything with that follow through, but yeah. he masters masters it and and he does it well. And now, if he were to try to change that, he'd be a much worse dart player. Yeah, absolutely, because that's what he's used to, isn't it? Good shot by Corey. Yeah, Corey Jensen, silently, just killing it. Now, I think this is the one player uh, that I don't know. Yeah, this is Carlos Saxby. Uh, he plays in these top levels with these players all the time. Um, he's a really good player, really solid shot. He might not be up to the same level as a John or Matt, but uh, he's not far off for yeah. sure. Well, good good for him to, to stay at this level and compete against these guys because that, that's what's going to get you better. And he continues to do that, and he has gotten... Uh, quite a bit better. He, he belongs here in this room, or else they wouldn't be playing for fifth place right now with the great teams that we've seen that are already out. You're absolutely right. And the guy, and again, you guys can all follow along on CompuSport. If you just search uh, Tournament of Champions or uh, PPD Major Events or Major Tournaments, uh, that'll bring you right here. And we are doing the Saturday's Triples right now. This is the no cap. And Ray Morgan. See, it's the take back that's just interesting. And you saw it slide out of his hands there. And it's the it's the bounce as he's throwing. But whatever works for you. Yep. Whatever works for you. I, I tell everyone, you know, they, they try to get lessons and, and so forth. I, I tell everyone, it, it doesn't matter how you hold the dart, how you throw it. If you're comfortable doing it, like Matt Graff is showing. Boom goes the Wisconsinite there for Matt Graff. What a time for that. My perfect example is Dave Chisnell. Oh, my goodness. It is hard to watch him throw darts often, but it's so pretty how often he hits 180s. Absolutely. And all three of those darts look entirely different on his follow-through. He just is really good at feeling the the miss that he's throwing and adjusting before the dart releases his hand. I don't know how he does it over and over again like that, though. Me neither, but um, he, he does it well. Nice shot by Carlos. He'll win a major. He will win a major soon. Yeah? Yeah, Chizzy. I don't know about Carlos, but... <laughs> Chizzy, Carlos, you know. He needs I thought you were talking about Carlos. So I was like, wow, yeah, you went yeah. from unknown to winning, winning a, major a major title. Believe. If you, never you believe, know. you never know. All right, here's John Pilgrim. Been very consistent. And I, he's their A player, uh, the player going number one. And when I first met John, it was definitely the opposite with Matt and him. Uh, and I think Matt's just put a lot of confidence into John to – to continue to, to do his job, and he's done that so far. That last round, though, left a little bit, left an opening. It did. Um, he had two numbers, and he chose to point first. Uh, I would have just shut the 16 down. See if it comes back to, to haunt them, but uh, Matt with his... He just nine marked. Spider-Man that just nine marked it mm -hmm. is going to come back and try to do the same thing here. It's a good when start you're to feeling, it. you're feeling it. When there you're feeling goes. it, you're feeling it. Oh, almost back-to-back -back nines for Matt Graff, but he has single-handedly uh, switched this thing around. It's just amazing. Uh, 
every time I watch him play now, that just it's just amazing how accurate he is with with his uh, technique. Yep. But uh, as he is showing it, it is working. He does blame everyone else uh, around him though, because he said no one told me otherwise when he first started playing darts, and so then it stuck. Well, which is which yep. is a good thing because no one had to tell you. Yeah. Because you weren't doing anything wrong, obviously. But seriously, no one else try that. <laughs> no, don't. Please. <laughs> <laughs> please don't. Yeah, point here, Carlos. It's only two bulls. Yep. Single does it there. Yeah, adds the extra bullseye on there. Because everything's divisible by 25s is what you're looking at there. Absolutely. And I have a feeling he's going to, yeah, see? A very veteran of the game. Oh, Those were already closed. Twice. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, he just just looked at the uh, board wrong, I guess. Yep. And John Pilgrim's going to take advantage of it. One more bull needed, and there it is. It's another double. So that'll do it. Uh, the South Dakota team gets fifth place, and the uh, Wisconsinites continue to move on. They take on Kenny Doyle, Nick Selepic, and Sugar Shane Johnson for fourth place. Uh, that will be the next race to one here now in the last chance side of the bracket. This is where it gets nitty gritty here in the race to one side. Uh, this is the last race to one, though. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure in this one game, I, I can only imagine. So um, as they, they're getting hype back there, Matt and John. Go ahead, guys. Y'all deserve that. What? So we're going to go ahead and uh, show you another interview here. This one's going to be with uh, Hunter Smith. Uh, Jake Smith's cuter half. So stay with us. Great player. Yeah. Hunter Smith, how are we feeling? Good. Just good. <laughs> just good. Uh, yeah, just good. Okay, so from what I understand, you've been here, uh, this is going to be your sixth time or fifth time? Fifth time. And last year was your first win? Yes. And how did that feel? Really good. So we're going from good to really good. Really, yeah. Well, that felt really good. <laughs> that felt really good. So how is it just a, uh, you know, obviously I haven't played this event yet, right? So when you hold that check, you, you, is that a, such a good feeling, like a great feeling? Oh, it's an adrenaline rush for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. How long have you been playing, period, Hunter? Six years. So six years and you, always, you already have a huge win under your belt. Yes. All right. Now, coming into this, you're defending champion in that event. But let's talk about the Cricket Doubles Invitational. From what I understand, you're playing with your husband, Jake Smith. Yep. Now, is that going to be good, really good, or we're just not going to answer? Uh, it depends on what mood we get each other in. <laughs> well, that's great, because I can't wait to see that one. What are your expectations in, in the other events? Do you, are, are you feeling good? Do the darts feel good? Uh, how are you coming in? What's the form like? Um, they're feeling good, but it's a really tough competition, so you have to go into it with your head strong and just hope to do your best. Absolutely. It is a tough competition, but you're here for a reason, and on behalf of PPD, we thank you, and uh, good luck this weekend. Thank you.
All right, welcome back to Kansas City, Missouri, the KCI Expo Center, live here for the 10th Annual Tournament of Champions. I'm Sean Green, the one on the left that looks better looking, and I'm joined by the older gentleman there on the right, Mr. Danny Baggish. Danny, buddy, we've had a great opening day so far. Triples, open triples, no cap event. This is the fourth place match between the Wisconsinites, and they are taking on Kenny Doyle, Nick Selepic, Floridians, and Sugar Shane Johnson, who's another Wisconsinite. So a little Wisconsinite on Wisconsinite action here. Yeah, it's going to be a good match as Kenny looks to open up with a nine mark again. Just misses. Oh, Earthquake <clears throat> yeah. here in Kansas City. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm a little thrown off uh, as we come back uh, with that uh, wonderful joke you just had right <laughs> off when we had it off air there. So, Hey, I told you I didn't want to say it. Uh, John yeah, Pilgrim only absolutely. gets 4.17s there. J uh, if anybody wants to know, because I know you want to know now. Uh, we were just talking, and, and he was asking about my experience overseas, and he says, Danny, who was the hardest competition for you overseas? And I was going to answer, and, and he go, he laughs and says, oh, never mind, everybody was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I... I laughed as well because, you know what? He was right. So, uh, <laughs> here we go. Nice shot by Matt. You did AKA beat the Canadian Spider -Man. often. Did you, you, did be, you had the best of the Canadian, at least at the right time. Listen, if you really want to know, you know, the Raymond Van Barneveld, yep. he's never beat me. This is all through these matches. Uh, James Wade, um, he's never beat me. And uh, these are plays I've played at least twice. Okay. So I was going to ask you how often... Uh, that that came about, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you know. So I'm those two. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's more on the list. I just uh, for some reason I can't remember. That's weird. You can probably count all those on one, two hands, maybe. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's already two, so I couldn't say one finger. All right, caller Zaxby. Let's back to the match here. He gets a three mark only. Uh, so Kenny Doyle, Sunshine State Santa. Is gonna see what he can do. He's going to go, isn't he? I, he's going to go right at the 17s. Back to point? Yep. You know, the, the last couple matches, and, and really all, all day here, it's been up and down for Kenny. Uh, Nick, is, as, as we've seen, has struggled a little bit. Yep. Uh, Shane, I think, has uh, been pretty co pretty consistent. The quiet, consistent one. Yeah, the quiet, consistent one. So um, if Kenny and Nick can just, just turn it up a little bit. Oh, John misses that last dart. Uh, I could I could see them making a, another run back. Absolutely. Well, this is the fourth place match. This is the last uh, automatically going only one leg here, cricket. And uh, whoever wins this one will have to double dip Jeremiah Millar, Jesse Gore, and Leonard Gates uh, in the in the third place match, or else um, they're out. Yeah, that's going to be a a tough task to do, isn't it? Have to double dip. Jeremiah, oh, almost there. Jeremiah, Gates, and Jesse. That's uh, it's just hard to even say it. Very unlikely, let's just say. Yeah, for sure. Uh, even though both these teams are more than capable, the problem is is that it's just, I mean, to beat them once is, is one thing, and that's possible, but uh, to have to do it twice without losing is, is very, very difficult. That being said, the format does kind of set up for it at least a little bit uh, because it will be the one loss side. So it will be f cricket 501 or 701 cricket, uh, which does kind of favor the team going first in the leg number two to go to a last leg decider at least. And then it's just a race to one. And then if they beat them there, then it's still just another race to one. Anyone can win one leg against someone else. Anyone. And, and we've I might be, be able to beat you one leg. Yeah, well, we won't stretch that. But uh, you're right. Most people uh, can just win one leg, right? So, uh, And going second, we've seen it happen a few times there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Going second, you, you winning just the one leg. So, yeah, it's not out of the question. It's, it's not impossible, but uh, it's definitely a hard task. I would argue that today so far we've actually seen the team going second win more often than the team going first in cricket. It's, it actually has been that close, at least. Yeah, and it just shows the caliber of the players. Uh, yeah. when, when you're that good to go, you're going second and winning legs, it's uh, it's it's a tough task, and they're doing it. So it shows how good that they're playing. That's a tough second dart because there's no way he's hitting this double bowl without um, 
getting really lucky almost. Yeah, you can see it there. That was a great tart, though. Yeah, I was hoping he'd hit it just because. Uh, I said really lucky. You yeah. could have gotten that. Can't be luck if you're aiming for it, Sean. <clears throat> well, Sugar Shane's going to aim right at those bowls and trying to hit three of those bad boys to finish the one off and go to the third place match. And there it is. So the run ends for the Wisconsinites, who had a great run to fourth place, which unfortunately in this bracket is the first loser uh, right out of the money. So at least they got to have fun today. The, great time. Great time to play all those darts and unfortunately be uh, one out. So, uh, yeah, what a match we got coming up. I'm so sorry to the Wisconsinites for me having to bring that up right away. But uh, as you look in the background there, there's, well, a very close up of the jersey of Sugar Sane. But there's Andy. My goodness, Nick Nick just knows where that camera is, that gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> human being. It kind of seems that way, doesn't it? What does Shane look like his Sugar Shane is something else. Yeah. He looks like he's from Wisconsin. Like, that's how from Wisconsin he is. You see Gary and Cole in the background there. There's uh, Kenny Doyle. A lot of people, a lot of great darters in the room. Uh, none better than you, sir. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. But Except for Jules. Yeah. yeah. And if any PDC player was here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, Sorry. Uh, w one. <laughs> one right now. One right yeah, now, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, the, he's the only one uh, threatening that. But uh, look at our sponsors there for this Tournament of Champions. You got Flashpoint Designs, Flight Faction, Monsta, Dart Militia. Is that what that is? Horizon Darts, USA Darts Productions, of course, Magic Wear. Mammoth Custom Apparel and LJ Sports. A lot of different clothing apparels, and that's what you love is to kind of to be able to cross-promote uh, a lot of different companies. And, of course, uh, our stream is sponsored by not any of those. <laughs> but but they have been flowing uh, on this early morning. A lot of players were here at 8 o'clock in the morning not to practice the dartboard, but to uh, get those drink tickets. Yeah, it's uh, definitely – Something that I'm sure Jules is used to as the PDC. Oh, is it a drink uh, ticket thing? It is, yeah, drink ticket thing, you know. Get our drinks. You don't just get free drinks as a p professional? No. Man, they, no you chance. Gotta, you got to re renegotiate that contract. Is there a CBA or something? Should be. <laughs> Definitely should be. There you go. Got to be the hero of the players right now, Danny. Oh, wait. Never mind. You're, you're not – Anyways, here's <laughs> Jeremiah. Look, what's the over-under? One and a half on how many or what number piece of gum that is. Oh, man, he chomps his gum. Yeah, is, uh, I'm saying over-under one and a half. I actually don't know if he just has the same one in his mouth the whole time. With how quickly, <laughs> with how like effectively he chomps, That's you would think that it would waste that flavor real quick. So he's got to have some high-quality gum first. I bet he spent some money on his gum. He probably does. What do you think it is? Um, I think it's... Chat, let us know the flavor that you think this gum is. It's got to be a spearmint. I was going to say spearmint uh, as well. I think that's a good go-to. He doesn't seem like a cinnamon kind of guy, and he's definitely not a winter mint or winter green. Is that what that is? Yeah. What was, what was the question? Uh, the question in the chat was um, one that you probably can't even answer. Um, which pros on PDC drink before a match? And you can, you can, I guess you can also talk about water. They didn't, yeah. they didn't specify. They did not specify all uh, of them. Then, right? Yeah, yeah, um, all of them. But None of them go thirsty. Like three. All of them, but three. All of them, but three. Yeah, all of them, but three. We got a uh, Dave Garfinkel in the chat. What's up, brother? Big Dave. Yeah, love Dave. Such a nice guy. So what do you think that's the first piece of gum or you think no. that's the second or third? No, it's it's definitely been quite a few. He also is one to it's it's gotta be tough also. Oh, this might change the flavor option because it's gotta be one that goes well with alcohol, right? Oh, that's a good point. Because that'd be weird. Maybe, Maybe this is only first. It's his first one because as soon as it gets unflavored, that's when you can start drinking and it doesn't affect it. So the one and a half spread is a good number. I to think set. it is. It might be. Lissandro says yeah. Bazooka Joe. I love that. Old school Bazooka Joe. Juicy fruit. <laughs> You're laughing, but I think that's a that's a good one. It might be. Jess sounds good, brother. 
Guys, let us know who you're tuning in, tuning in for. Uh, it's definitely not those two down there at the bottom. Sean Green, Danny Baggish. That is uh, that is our names. Yeah, speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> they might be tuning in for me, buddy. Um. <laughs> Big lead, League Chew is what Garfinkel says. Why are they texting each other? They're right next to each other. I don't understand why people do that. As the room <laughs> is filling in. They're yeah, filling look at in. this. They're getting ready for the uh, the third place match and then the the finals here of the no cap. And you can see the entire streaming area. Uh, this is the much smaller portion of the venue. Uh, you go out through those curtains there, and it's just a sea of dartboards. It is. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful view. It's a great sight. All those dartboards in use as well, which is also crazy. Yeah. I went live earlier, and I, I just had to share it. So definitely, I missed uh, it. Yeah, definitely be beautiful scene. i got to take you off mute. Do you really have me on mute? No. You, Sean. No, of course not. Oh. I thought you were talking because of my that. Facebook. No, no, no. It, I mean, that was the joke, but. Yeah, I got uh, it. It just took me a minute. Yeah, for no. Or, or for, for no. For sure for no. no. Yeah, yeah, for sure no. No sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy's asking how many boards total. Do we have that number? There's eight in here and 177 in the hall. Which is 185 for anyone that has a trouble uh, with math. Won't mention any names. It's a lot of hands. It is. Needed for that. Absolutely. Look at that. Gates wins the diddle, and he has his own button pusher in Jeremiah Millar, <laughs> returning the favor. <laughs> Jeremiah Millar, of course, the only one with a button pusher in the CSE Challenger Series, or at least he was the OG. Uh, and that Brian Henry of Motor City Darts, who I have not seen yet. Where you at, Brian? What's going on? Did he try to uh, – was he the one – because I know he put an application in. I didn't know if it was for that. Um, but I know that Jeremiah submitted something um, in protest to have Brian Henry be the put button pusher for the CSI as Gates opens up with a nine mark. Yeah, there, that's Leonard Gates. That's Leonard Gates that we know and love uh, right out the gate. Getting it started. No pun intended. It happens more often than not because of just that I say that saying a lot. Yeah. Kenny Doyle only a three mark follow. Again, this is a race to two here. This is the third place match, so they go to the one loss uh, format, which will be cricket 01 cricket. Um, the cricket does set up, or the 01 does kind of set up for the team going first in leg number two to have the best chance to winning with it being open bowl uh, 701, open and open out as well. So that's where the 25 and the 50 are both worth 50 points there on the bullseye. But Sugar Shane, nice eight mark there. It's a little bit too, too, too little too late, though. Seven mark, but yeah. A little, yeah. Little bit, a little what bit am I too, saying? It's all right. A little bit, yeah, use your hands. A um, little <laughs> bit uh, too late for that uh, as Jesse's going to shut the 18 down. There he goes. The Maloney double. Oh, gosh, the Maloney double. Oh, I, know, I hate that shot. Y y Mike Maloney has affected a lot of people with his online play, right, as Nick tries to shoot the double as well. Um, he's affected everyone with his yep. play, and, and it's been great. But he's affecting them the wrong way with, yep. with this double shooting. I, I absolutely uh, don't like it, but, ah, you know, works for him. Leonard Gates, again, a little bit unconventional in the way that he goes about it, but when you're hitting everything, you can do whatever you want. Guys, I want you to really understand, and Jeremiah's face when Gates goes up and throws a shot is, is just in like, it's what's he doing? And of course... And then he hits it. Absolutely, and Leonard wears headphones, um, so he's not going to really talk to his partners um, about that strategy. They, they just kind of trust each other. Uh, in that regard, and so it's, you know that they did not talk that out beforehand, but look at that, a 6.60 from Jeremiah Millar. Leonard Gates went 9 mark, 5 mark, so he also was above a 6, and that's uh, Jesse Gore through once in that leg. Yeah, so 7.0660 and a 5.0 for the team. Uh, 
Yeah, that's that's hard to beat. Well, here we go. The five or the 701 leg, where again, it tends to favor player number one. The that team it does. going first, but we've seen some perfect legs out of uh, the team of Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard already. You just do like a fly motion there at the end? Yeah, uh, he does that a lot, if you, if you notice. He does that a lot. Usually when he misses, though, so I, I was surprised to get that when he hit the hat. My favorite thing that he does is when he calls himself Gator, which should have been his dart nickname, hands Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Come on, Gator. He says it all the time. It's great. But I love the I love the, the little twist there with the soul, S-O-U-L. Oh, that yeah. Was, uh, that was good. You see a perfect game from uh, Millar and Gates and Jesse here. If if Jesse hits a hat trick here, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's usually what it's based on the third player, isn't it? Nick's been struggling. Uh, ooh, he's gonna want to hit the hat here. It's a low ton, but again, at this point, uh, the. It's really in the hands of Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard now. It, it is, uh, and that's it's going to put a lot of pressure on uh, the next player, which is uh, Kenny. Kenny knows he has to shoot a 170 here. 150, yep. 160 doesn't work. So it leaves 179, 169. So he's going to go 170 here to try to leave that out, or else uh, Gates and them will have the first shot, and he, he doesn't do it. You wanted to see if he was going to do it, didn't you? Well, I knew, he would, I knew he would actually do that, and you're absolutely right. And honestly... Even me, who's a level six, level seven player, whatever, whatever, I'm thinking about that as well. Yeah. Um, on my shot, I I want to make sure I leave my opponent or my my partner the first look at the finish if I can. So, uh, and as a partner, I expect my partners to do the same thing. Absolutely. Um, for me, so, um, that's textbook, and at this level, they're absolutely doing all of that. Well, we would hope so. Yeah. If they're not, there's they're getting lucky to be in the third place match right now. Yeah. Because you know most of the room is. Well, this is one of those where Shane just goes, well, just in case he misses. Um, this is a bit of a trickier out with the 144, but he does he can't start on the bull here. Yeah, he will. He'll go bull and then 54. This is the big dart. Oh, he knew it. Yep. He knew it, yep. I love his. You just go bullseye here, right? Yeah, of course. I'd waste a few more seconds, but yeah, you go bullseye. Just to make him think about it a little bit more. Yeah, make your opponent think about it more. No, that's not a bad leave. A little two-dart action. Single bowl. And Nick. Yep. He's been, like we say, he's been struggling. Uh, he needs to write it off here. Trip 19. He will go trip 19. I'd go trip 20 here. I go bullseye here. I go trip 20 because if you had a single, it still leaves 54. And I like the bowl for double 12. But you're probably right now. <laughs> but I expect myself, of as course. I would expect someone like at his level, to hit the bullseye there on dart two. I, I don't, I don't disagree. But uh, like I tell everyone, you, you always got to make sure you, you not you double you're ten. Miss. Oh, you can go single twenty. That's right. You know what I mean? The, a lot of these you're, players. You're right. Take it for granted. But there you uh, go. So this is where the finals becomes even more interesting because Jeremiah Millar, Jesse Gore, and Leonard Gates now only have one loss as we head to the finals, so th they will still need to lose twice to Jules, Mike Carter. And uh, Johnny Lackey. And Johnny Lackey. Yeah. How did I forget him? Um, that's the first first time that's ever happened for him, I'm sure. Um, so there you go. They, so they still have to – so Johnny, Jules, and Mike still have to beat them twice in order to win this thing. Uh, versus the three times, so it's only a one loss difference. If and th both these teams stacked. Yeah, absolutely, and it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fight. Every every leg, every every game is gonna be good. And uh, Gates and them, they want revenge. Absolutely, a hundred percent. And this is gonna be a this is gonna be a good one. I'm telling you right now, the lowest average player, cricket player, uh, in this finals, uh, is a four point six eight nine. That's Johnny, isn't it? It is. And he's playing. He's been playing above that. He's been playing above yep. that. So if if he can, and and like we said, it's it's going to be based off the third player usually, right? So if he can 
play above his average and Jesse play above his average, we're going to be in for a slaughter here. It's going to go back and forth. Yeah. Uh, I mean, averages-wise, it does favor uh, Jesse Gore, um, Leonard, and Jeremiah with their averages. But with how Mike Carter, Jules, and Johnny have been playing today, it's this is anyone's ball game. What? All right, so we're going to head to an interview here while we get ready for the finals. But don't go anywhere. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Danny Baggis, Sean Green, back for the finals right after this. Danny Baggish, we are happy to have you out here for your first ever Tournament of Champions brought to you by Partners Promoting Darts in Kansas City, Missouri. How's it feel to be out here? Uh, the feeling is unbelievable. They're, this they're is the first time, time out here time. Uh, to be able to work with such a great crew yep. like yourself and Sean and Jen and, uh, of course, Will. Um, uh, it's, it's great. And, and when I first walked in here, it was unbelievable. Uh, I've been into a lot of venues, you know, Alley Pally, so forth. But when I walked in here, I actually got goosebumps. It, it just the the vision, uh, just the atmosphere, and and what I saw with nobody, with an empty room. I visualized everyone in here, and it was it was just great. Well, I mean that's a high praise for someone with your prowess in the darting scene. But we're working on another aspect of your career when it comes to commentary and production and doing other things. I mean, how exciting is it to be doing that all week long? Uh, as long as I get to work work side, uh, you know, yourself and Sean and and Jen and Will. Um, it's, it's, I think it's going to be great. I think, uh, I, I love it. Uh, the commentary part of it, I, I just keep it, keep it real, keep it 100. And uh, if they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. I'm never going to sugarcoat anything. I'm always going to give my honest predictions and, and, uh, try to give my knowledge to everyone watching as well. Yeah, and now we have a really high contentious topic here. A lot of fans of uh, the food reviews of Porky are kind of coming into the woodworks, and then there's the travel baggage fans as well. Uh, what do you have to say about that whole uh, beef between the two USA Dart shows? It's not. There's no beef. I don't like that word because then you're just kind of catering towards the the food. There was order. there was actually beef. Yeah, and yeah, I, you know, I, yeah, I don't. I don't. No, no beef. Okay. Um, no, this it's it's okay. It's Porky. It's all right. I don't I don't mind uh, with him. Uh, I like him. I, I love the guy. Uh, but travel baggage. Everyone knows that they they always going to watch my show more so. And then getting your per, uh, opinion as a professional darts player, what do you feel about seeing something like a triple elimination style bracket and uh, what that might be like to see these players experience this for maybe their first time? Um, I think it's great. I think it's unfortunate for players uh, like Maloney being in person. Um, but uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, I, I wish, well, I can't wait to join next year. And uh, it's going to be an awesome experience for players just now joining and be able to experience the triple elimination. Can you beat Mike Maloney in arm wrestling? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, online, no. You heard it here first, Danny. Is there anything else you want to say to the people that are going to be hearing your lovely, sultry tones all week long? Absolutely. Um, once again, thank you to Nick, uh, Jen, Sean, Will. Um, I appreciate all of you. Uh, and PPD, thanks for having me. If it wasn't for all of you guys, I wouldn't be here. And I appreciate it. Travel baggage, number one. Thank you.
get into darts, but you're not sure how, we can definitely help with that. We're A to Z darts.com and we've been a dart specialty store for over 30 years. We have the greatest variety of darts in the country. But don't worry, we can narrow down that selection for you. Whether you're a complete beginner or a full-on expert, we developed our own Colonial brand to offer an inexpensive line of darts, dartboards, and accessories so you can get into the game without breaking the bank. Join our amazing community by going to azdarts.com. So today we're going to learn how to throw a dart. In each turn of darts, you get three darts to throw. So with all three darts in your non-throwing hand, step up to the toe line. If you're right-handed, put your right foot on the line, lefties, left foot. This isn't baseball, so you want the same foot forward as your throwing arm, not the opposite. Usually the toe line is set so that your foot will be right up to the front edge of the line, not behind it. This toe line is also known as the Aki. The position of your front foot uh, is usually at an angle to the line, to some degree. Your back foot should be a little bit wider than shoulder width away from the front. Put one dart in your throwing hand while holding on to the other two darts in your other hand. Looking at the dartboard, focus in on a spot you want to hit. To start, let's look right at the bullseye. As you stare at your target, lean forward, bring the dart up and draw it back towards your eye. Throw the dart by moving your hand and forearm towards your target, keeping everything else as still as possible. Hold your position while transferring the second dart to your throwing hand and repeat your throw. Once you've thrown all three darts, your turn is complete and you can retrieve your darts from the board. And yes, it will take some practice to get the dart to go where you're aiming. It's not as easy as the pros make it look. But with practice, I guarantee your accuracy will get better. And I tell you, there's nothing better than having three darts go exactly where you wanted them to. If you've already been throwing darts and have had success with something slightly different than what I've just explained, great, fantastic. As long as it works for you, no problem. Just keep in mind that any extra movement in your throw will make it harder for you to hit your target consistently. Uh, as a beginner, just try to get all three darts to land in the same area. As you build your confidence, you can narrow down your target, getting all three darts to land in one number, say, like the 20s. All right, welcome back everybody to the 10th Annual Tournament of Champions brought to you by Partners Promoting Darts live at the KCI Expo Center in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm Sean Green, play-by-play -play commentator, 
joined, of course, by the gambler, Mr. Danny Baggish. Danny, this is the finals of the no-cap triples, and we got ourselves a doozy. Oh, absolutely. This is uh, this is what we had on paper, I think. I, uh, I think this is the two best teams uh, in the room, and uh, they're going to fight it out. It looked like the screen switched on Leonard right as he was about to throw the dart. Yeah, uh, whoever programmed that at that time was, was smart. Jules owes that person money. That's just on the inner there, the double, and that's a blocker dart on top of it. Not if you're JVD. Watch this. Yeah, blocker dart. Yep. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Gates ah. and uh, them go. Gates and Millar and Gore with the throw. And let's talk format here. This is the finals of the no cap. So this first match will be a race to two all cricket between Jules, Mike Carter, and Johnny Lackey. And uh, they are on the king seat. So they have to be beaten three times by Leonard, Jeremiah, and Jesse Gore. Uh, Jesse Gore, Leonard Gates, and Jeremiah Millar are only, only have one loss. So they still have to be beat twice. Uh, this could go three more matches, and that would be wonderful. Yeah, it, it would be it would be a win for everyone. Um, one team here, they say it's hard to beat in sports terms. They say it's hard to beat a team three times. Yep. Well, one team here is going to do it. And they have to. Yeah. Because this was also the match to play for the king seat. So the only loss that – oh, no, this was the very first match of the day that for both correct. of these teams. That is correct. And they almost knew – when they had to play each other this early on, that this was probably going to be uh, the finals. A lot of teams tried to make that not the case, but did not work out that way. And we were, we were just talking earlier about uh, how long it's been since Johnny, Jules, and Mike has played. Yeah, so who has the advantage here? The team that's played uh, the most rapid fire here in the last two and a half hours, or the team that waited for two and a half hours? Uh, I, I, oh man, that, that's a tough one because I think obviously with with the team that's coming in hot, uh, you would say has the advantage. But um, because this is such capable players, all of them, yeah, I don't think it matters in this situation as he should be taking the shot at the twenty, shaking his head, and he's going to drill it. Oh, oh. almost. Oh, for fourteen already. <laughs> uh, welcome to the commentary booth, yeah. buddy. Yeah, that's all right. I think that you're right there. I'm going to make uh, one one other point is that even if it is a slow start for Johnny, Jules, and Mike, uh, they have a loss to give, so to speak. It's such a long format here with a team having to win three times or twice that they can almost have an off match and yeah. still, still win this pretty easily. Agreed. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say – the player who has the lowest average between Jesse and Johnny, the one, the player that has a higher average, that that team will win. Okay, it will come down to the third, th third the player. Third player, correct. As I say that, Gates missed the big number to close. Well, sometimes it comes down to the first player, but Jules is only going to do the bare minimum here too. Not even the bare minimum. But. You do like the strategy of closing the high ground there. The problem is that it's going to be so much easier for Maya to close the high ground on them after he trips the 18 on dart one. Sure. Um, and he, he was obligated there after he took the shot and missed. So. Oh, he's going the 17 instead. Is that for the switch purposes, or is it because it's a more comfortable number for him? Uh, maybe maybe height, um, eye level. Um, yep. It's easier. You know, He's not throwing up to the number. Um, and I'm actually, uh, you know, I'm being dead serious. I know p people probably laughing at it or whatever the case may be. But um, I giggled because yeah. I thought you were trying to make a slide at Adam for his height. Well, I, I did. I did do it. But yeah. um, I, I do have some truth behind that. Here is Jesse Gore from Lakeland, Florida. Only a two mark from Jesse. So Johnny Lackey here, Dr. Handsome from Houston, Texas, is going to see what he can do. Johnny Lackey. Not even thinking about moving at any point in time. Nope. Nope. 
bigger numbers, no need, make them make them chase you, but you have gates behind you. So like you said, it's this chess versus uh chess in this match. I was gonna say checkers, but obviously yeah. it's not that's not a good comparison. I mean, that's the comparison I make between cricket and five oh one. Uh in this case it's a lot more math related at this level of play. Uh, every once in a while you'll see someone like Leonard Gates who math wise is not his strongest part of his game uh, will play off a of feel and because he's so good that feel will work and you can see Maya and him actually talking strategy there about what uh, Leonard would rather him do which is interesting that he had him take out his headphone and, and have that conversation with him just to make sure they're on the same page here. See, he, he, my my thing there is if you trip the 15, another triple doesn't put you ahead. Yeah. Right, you're still only five bulls, five bulls down. I actually go 15, and then I go trip 16, and then I go to the bull. I don't even look at the 15 because it doesn't give you the point lead. Hitting a triple only, only gives you another bull. Oh, no. The Mike Maloney effect. Yep. Dynamite tried to go for the double, and that's that's what happens. If you go outside, that's that's a bad dart. And the opportunity is definitely there for this to switch completely, and nine mark will do that for Jesse Gore. There's the first one. Needs another one of those. Oh, now it's going to stay. Got to hit dart three, though. I have to. Ronnie Lackey's been consistent. Yep. Just make sure you shut the 15 down. That's, your, that's the most importantly. And then at least hit 116. It's a good double on dart two. That's big. He made up for that first dart. He did. You just said good double on dart two. I know. I never would say something like that. But <laughs> it's also because the, the treble was blocked there. Gates going to put some pressure on that on that round. It's still doable. But it's jewels. Yeah, five to three. Uh, we expect jewels to to hit the three here and uh, go ahead one zero. There yes, you go. Does. They are one leg away from winning this first match and giving the team of Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard two losses. You can see uh, one of our production team there, and I don't know if you can see him in the bright pink hair. But that's uh, Nick Young Buck Darachi to share. And this right here is a uh, soldier, Leonard Gates. Starting off with a nice boom goes the dynamite right out the gate. Love it. Absolutely love it. It seems so much, so surreal listening next to you with the boom goes di the dynamite. Uh, the surreal part is that um, it's it's a thing. There's Young Buck, Nick to share. Getting his camera all set up for some, some winning darts. Because they'll happen eventually. I don't know if you guys can see Andy back there looking like he's having the time of his life. <coughs> Sitting on that top level there in his PPD jersey. Mike Carter looking down at the 19s. Now going to go back up. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Jules, uh, Jules' team here going second. It's going to be tough to win this leg, especially when Jesse's smashing in five, seven, nine marks. You said the third player is going to make the difference. The difference on why this is the king seat here for Jules, Johnny, and Mike is because Johnny Lackey has thrown very, very well he has. this morning. You see it there again. See a lot of Houstonites. Or Houstonites. I don't even know that's a thing. Uh, Texans back there in the background. <laughs> I'm just going to guess that's every not a thing. St every state's going to be somethingites. Nah, hey, it makes it easier on me. <laughs> you know? A two mark by Gates there. Uh, opening for Jules. Uh, he's going he's gonna to look to pounce on that one. Yeah, he would have loved to take a shot at the closing the 20s. Absolutely. There's uh, that. I, I do that a lot as well. When a player of Gates's caliber and Jules, they're in front of me. They open up with two mark. I put more emphasis on my throw to punish it, but uh, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. 
It's a shark smelling blood in the water. Absolutely. That was an interesting release on Dart 3 from Maya. I don't know if you saw that. You saying a bit snatchy? Yeah, it was a little snatchy. My Carter gets that point lead back. But again, they know five marks just is not enough right now, which is, again, crazy to say. You don't like it, do you? No. He <coughs> I don't like it only because uh, they have the 20s. and There's owner of Partners Promoting Darts, Mr. Jim Turntine. Take your shot, Johnny. He did. Is that the dart? That, yeah, that's, that's the shot I would have taken. Uh, I don't think Gates is going to not look at the, anything else but that triple 20. I still don't, and no matter what he's thinking about, I still don't think he shoots the, the 17 here. See, Maya yelled something at him, but Gates has headphones in, so he's not listening to that. I bet no one expected that dart. No, but he proved me right. No yeah. matter what he does, he's not shooting the 17. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, he was actually just turning up the volume because uh, he can hear me. Yeah. Yeah, great dart from Jules. Love and there dart. you go. The dragon's breathing some fire. He is. Needs a triple. Gets the triple as you look at it. Yeah, you have to at this point. Jesse's saying whatever you want to do. Right. He, and Leonard, Jeremiah's just looking for it, so just tell me something. What do you want me to do? Don't overthink it. Tell me something. I, but again, if you're Jeremiah Millar, he, he just loves to analyze, right? So that's why he really steps back and asks those questions. But he should know what he's going to do there on that third dart automatically. Yeah. And I like that dart right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're putting the pressure back on Mike. And there it is. That's wide open now. Wide open. 315 here. 315s here wins this game. That's all you got to be thinking about if you're Jesse. 315s wins this game. That's all right. Got that. Let Gates hit the bull. Yeah, you, just, say, you just load it up. If you go points on dart two, you go points on dart three. That's it. Puts it out of reach. Yeah, and Johnny knows that that would have made it six to... Five. Five to three. Would have been five to three? Yeah. I knew you were here for a reason. Oh, wow. Look at this. And oh, that's closed. Oh, he shoots the wrong number. Then Jules does not have winning darts. He doesn't have winning darts. Um, he's he's basically thinking the same thing. After I hit three bulls here, do I, do I shut the 16 down? Do I shut it after I hit he the first double? They win all. Which doesn't even get the point lead. And Maya again just talking it out beforehand, but at least he's doing it beforehand here. Sure, but uh, th this is like to me uh, just shoot I for the win. Yeah, yeah, you just shoot the three bulls. You're you're, you're in the no cap division. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? True. No matter who you are, shoot shoot three bulls to win. <laughs> and Jesse Gore back there's like, see, just like that. And there you go. Let's go to a last leg decider here in the first one. It's going to be cricket. And leg number three, they're going to diddle for start. They're going to ask the most seasoned TOC players what the format is. Jesse shooting a five there and Johnny shooting a four, six, seven. It's crazy. But there you go. And there oh, he is. There he is. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Mike Maloney. It, in the flesh. Talking to himself. Uh, Saying hi to Jeremiah there real quick. Yeah. 
just basically saying wow. um, I, I think the smiles is because he's seeing people shoot the double. Um, <laughs> and he, he's excited that what he's doing it's online is It's just weird to see Mike everybody. Maloney in a jersey. Usually he wears joggers and a plain white T-shirt. Yeah. Is it pronounced Yager or Jogger? Yager. It's a soft J? Yeah, I think so. There you Leonard, go. Leonard, I think. Can you hear me, Gates? Did he drop a. Yeah, he dropped his, uh, his earpiece. earpiece. Make sure he can hear me. Why'd you tell him to go single one on dirt one? No, I said just at least hit six here and you're good. There you go. Is it good enough, though? You got no. Dulesman Dog and Fallen. No, sometimes seven ain't going to be good enough. Not with these two teams. Wow. Unexpected there. So, door is wide open already. Just going to stay there. Mm, he's not going to be, yeah. Yeah, he's stuck on it. Not happy with that one. Not happy with that one. If I'm Mike here, if I, if I trip the 18 at any point in time, I take a shot to close the 20. That'll work. Maybe Mike had the earpiece in. Can you hear me, Mike? <laughs> oh, okay. Good Just walk there. back behind the line if you can hear him. There you <laughs> go. Good job. And only a two mark there from Jesse. So this is the moment. Yeah. This could be the moment. <coughs> Johnny Lackey's been really good today at taking advantage of the moment too. And I actually see. I know he's going 17 here. I actually like 18s there. You like stealing that number. Yeah, yep. steal the number. That way they can't point and close your number. Well, it completely makes the last round worthless for your opponent. It does. But now Leonard can run here with a trip 18, and then he'll close the 17s on dirt too, though. There you go. So, again, for those of you just joining us here, this is the finals of the Open Cap Triples event here on day one of Tournament Champions as we get a white horse from Jules Van Dongen. Well, there you go. Maya's feeding into the crowd a little bit. Do you see that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is he going to hit this uh, double bull here on dart three, or is it going to cost him? Oh, no. He hit in the black. Yeah. Just the wrong the wrong one. Absolutely. You got to love it. You got to have fun here, or else what's the point? Totally agree. Still pressure. Still pressure oh, absolutely. Uh, on Jesse here. Four to three race. My mat's getting better. It is getting better. We've only been here. Oh, here, here it is. Oh, oh, that's a great second dart. No! Oh. You see him short arm it? Oh, no. And who did we say it might come down to? The Ooh, third player on both teams. The third player on both teams. Can still do it. Now he cannot. Hey, he kind of dropped that dart as well, didn't he? he? Yes, he did. I don't see uh, Gates missing this one. Ball. What no. do you think? No, no, not at all. Yeah. And then uh, we'll be one loss apiece. We are one loss apiece, so they are dead even now. There is no longer a king seat or anything. The format now shifts as well to cricket 01 cricket. And that will happen for the next two matches, no matter what. But to be fair, Don, I do not know anything about about darts. So you were half right. <laughs> I don't even know what was said, but um, yeah. Arguably. Arguably. All okay. right, so here we go. It is now one loss apiece.
Cricket 01 Cricket is going to be the format. And again, that's for the next two matches, no matter what. Okay, so... Because they're at least going to play two more matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because it'll be uh, two losses. Okay, it makes and sense. And if they split those two matches, then it goes to a just one, one leg of cricket one for the whole game kit and caboodle. And I think that's what we want, don't we? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think the people watching along with us deserve it, which are over a 1,000 people across our platforms. Can't tell you much. We appreciate that. Make sure you hit the share button here as we are dead even. And you can see uh, just how much these players respect and like each other, which is always good to see. Oh, for sure. Or are they just faking it nicely? Uh, I think it's a mixture of all of it. <coughs> well, Jules gets it done there. You kind of expect him to with where that first start landed for Leonard. It's about the worst spot you can put a diddle just to leave it wide open for your opponent. Yeah, so this is going to be cricket. And uh, like we said before, going first here is huge. Uh, trying to get the win and then... With these two teams, you fully expect the team that goes first in this in uh, the second oh, leg yeah. to win. Absolutely. With it being seven seven oh one open and open out full bowl. And we might see some perfect legs of O one here. All right, so here we go. Jewel's getting us started. Live here at the KCI Expo Center in Kansas City, Missouri. This is the 10th annual Tournament of Champions. Brought to you by Partners Promoting Darts and USA Darts Productions. Here, I'm Sean Green, joined by Danny Baggish. This is the finals. And we're going to see some very high-quality darts between these two teams, to say the least. Yeah, we already have, and uh, I look forward to seeing more of it. Should uh, We shouldn't be missing a beat, no matter uh, who's throwing here. Mike Carter at least closes the 19s there, which was the bare minimum of what he wanted to get accomplished. Jeremiah's going to take the shot at the 20 at some point here. Should, should do at least right here. I don't know. Yeah, it looked like he stepped over to open it up. By the way, anyone who's been listening along with us all day so far, nice starts there from Johnny Lackey, uh, should understand what the entire strategy is for Danny Baggish when it comes to playing cricket now. Absolutely. Absolutely. The way you call shots on higher ground versus lower ground means that you do pay attention mostly to that that style of uh, of play. You like having the higher ground when you can. Yeah. That's and shifting that when you can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm no grandmaster, but uh, that's uh, definitely my my opinion on it. Um, but everyone has an opinion, and uh, it's not right or wrong. You have to hit the shot. That's the most important thing. The only thing that you know for sure is that it's always the right shot if you hit it. Always. <laughs> always. Doesn't matter. Even when Jeremiah Millar is shocked and shaking his head at what you just did, at least you hit it. Yep. Absolutely. All right, Mike Carter. Going to look up at the 20s here. You going to look at the 16s? Yeah, and he hits it. Boom goes the dynamite. You could hear the crowd in here. That's a that's that's what I like to see. That's what I like to hear. The by, excitement behind it. By the crowd, you just mean Alyssa Evans. Yes. Which is Mike's better half there in the background. She's become a fantastic dart player in her own. Yes, she has. Good player. Good player, good supporter. Playing in that women's CSI as well. She is. Yep. Yeah, he's just going to take a shot now. Right shot. Jesse can't do much here except for uh, just bang the 15s out. Yeah, there's no reason to switch after the first two, even with a little bit of a point lead. Now 
Lash just doesn't do enough, no matter what it was going to be. Especially when you have jewels bre breathing down your neck. Good shot at the triple to close there, Jules. Yes, the right way to do it, right? It should be the only way. Um, so, uh, But Mike has proven a lot of things to us, which is uh, two things. One, uh, shoot doubles in cricket, which we don't support. And two, uh, if you want to be great like Mike Maloney, play online. Wow. Leonard gets five of them, especially after that first start was a blocker for sure. Moves over and just hits two. Doubles. Jeremiah trying to keep him hyped up. And, uh, uh-oh. Yeah, that big number's just going to... I mean, for, for every one triple, you got to hit four bulls. Three bulls, sorry. The math actually favored Mike staying up on the 20s on dart three. With Johnny next, does he take the shot to close? Oh, doesn't look like it. And this is why dart number three should have been at the 20s. Because if it was at the 20s, then Maya wouldn't have a point lead here, and then Johnny could go 1, 2, 3 on the Bulls. Still only three marks needed. Where are my bull oh, oh, uh oh, oh, uh oh, 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 Well, now we know why he did that. Oh, oh no! Oh, my goodness. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Oh. My goodness. You can see how oh, he's the adrenaline's hitting Jesse right now. Yeah, he was not expecting this no, for absolutely sure. Not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's you don't blame him for there. And Jules is like, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> oh wow. Six point oh from Jules Van Dong in that one. It, you can see how upset Leonard and Jeremiah were at the opportunity that Jesse ended up getting. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Well, that's uh, Gates, one, not paying attention. Johnny, one, not paying attention. So um, almost cost both of them the leg. They're dead even now on that. Yeah. Leonard, only a low ton start. Yeah, looking for uh, Jules to open up with a hat here and then take the 30-point lead. It's like throwing in the ocean. You know what? You're you're not wrong, and that's that's why I don't like the full ball option here. It's just, you know, you can only watch the best dart players hit bowls so many times in a row, you know? Yeah. Or hit low tons. He is not happy about that. One low ton is fine. Two low tons is is not ideal. Two low tons puts a lot of pressure in your next six starts because they have to now go hat hat to leave it out. Yep. And not an easy finish. No, not at all. Not at all. And staying perfect right now is your opponents are already up one nothing. Yes. Uh he, he has to hit the two bulls here to leave the 180-177. He does. Yep. So still a shot. Jeremiah's got to tell Gates here. Shoot I mean, the 180. Let's be honest, though. If you want one person to hit a 180 when you need him to do it, it's Leonard Gates. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm thinking he's going to... He should go with it. No. Because yeah, he's, the, the, he's got the earplugs and the earphones in, so he didn't hear him. But that's what you – playing with him for so long, you got to tap him yep. on the shoulder there, get his attention. Yeah, he's, Maya's not happy about it in the background. Oh, yeah. I mean, you weren't his partner in this time, but at Booyah Cup last year, you tapped Leonard on, on his shoulder and told him that the number that he was shooting at was closed. Oh, <laughs> that, well, was, that was being so used to not to having him as a partner, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I would do that with anyone. I, I don't want someone shooting the wrong wrong shot, and I win that way. So um, might have cost me the match there, but um, it's okay. I'd do it over again. And all Maya can do is leave the 57. 
which he does. But the 142 is also a two-bull finish here for Mike Carter because he can't hit that trip 14 on dart three. And that's exactly what I do here is bullseye, bullseye, trip 14. I think he hits it if he hits the second bull. Oh, there's the stop. Well, he, he misgripped it. Misgripped it, yeah. And how often does it mess, mess your rhythm up? That much. I'm surprised he went there on dart two, though. I'm very surprised as well. So Jesse Gord, trip 19. We'll send this into a last leg decider. If you miss the tri trip 19, don't miss low on the double. That'll work. Oh, that will work. Just how he drew it up. Seven for bull. I think he shot it that way. He definitely did not with how close that was on Absolutely the wire to the trip not. 19. But uh, if you're going to miss, miss right there and gets it done. 1-1 one, one scoreline. Let's go to another last leg decider. Guys, trust me, there's going to be way more of these um, oh. Oh, yeah. before this match is even over because they will at least play one more match after this one no matter what. Who will have the advantage? Will it be the first time that Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard do? Or will Johnny, Jules, and Mike continue to, to stay a match ahead? Well, that was a bit to be desired there for Gates. So it will be Johnny, Jules, and Mike with the start. We've talked about this so far today often. It's about 50-50 on the team going second winning this in this format. I totally agree. It's going to be how, how fast can Gates' team get rid of the 20. That's what I think it's going to be based on. How, how, when are they going to take the shot after they either get ahead or, or they're a little behind and they take the shot, they take away the big number. Yeah, typically in, in this, it tends to come down as uh, to one or two darts that make the entire difference. And if that dart hits or misses. It's a big last dart just to just kind of stay within touch there. Mike's going to load up this 20. And he's going to stay there. That's an unlucky last to go through both the flights and end up in the trip five. Absolutely. Jeremiah, is, the minute he hits the trip 19, no matter what dart it is, first, second, uh, he's going to take the shot at the 20. He's staying there. He'll take the shot now, though. And then celebrate if he hits it. There it is. There it is. And there's this, come on. Yep. Boom goes the Dynamite, Jeremiah Millar. That's what you got to do in Last Light Deciders. Point lead back. And hey, if you want to get qualified for TOC 2024, all you got to do is go to dartstoc.com and check out the map. The map shows any location with G3 boards within the PPD system. And it doesn't take a ridiculous amount of games to be eligible either. Consistently playing one league a week will keep you eligible for this event in the future. Again, go to dartstoc.com to get signed up today. Playing a little chess instead of checkers there in that? Or is that... No, uh, you, you get to a certain point when, when you're over, you know, the 100... 21, 30 points behind, uh, shutting their number down isn't going to matter. So why not just open more numbers and just hope they that they falter a little bit and then take the shot on down the line. And whichever number they don't close, then you can point the next one. Exactly. Wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised here if, if Mike kind of – see, he's just thinking, do I go 16, do I go 18? Um, it's going to go 18. Staying. Staying again. Well, that's the right decision because he hit it. And that's why they call him Dynamite Carter. Good sportsman yeah. sportsmanship there from, from uh, Maya there. He wants this, though. Maya likes to play challenged matches. He likes to be pushed to his limit. I think it takes a lot out of him after the, the match is over, of course, but I don't think you'd have it any other way than this. Follows up his nine with a three. Yeah, Johnny's uh licking his chops here. You see him back there 
kind of in the in the groove with his music, and uh, I think he's going to have a big shot here. I think he knows what he's going to do. He knows he's going to take a shot at the trip 19. He's just composing himself. It's going back. Oh, he made that decision quickly on dart three. I don't mind it. Uh, may, maybe he had it uh, decided already before he shot the second dart, saying, if I miss, I'm, I'm just going to stay there. Uh, but I think it's the right play. Once again, just my opinion. No, uh, for I'll, sure. Yeah, I'm not a grandmaster, but I do think that, uh, that it, was, it was the right shot. I love you so much. <laughs> All right, Jesse Gore does get the point lead back. But again, opens up the door a little bit for Jules to take back control of the leg. That was way off of where he was shooting. Yeah, you can tell by his reaction. If you take the second uh, second dart there, the 16, might as well take the third. Right. Because otherwise that second dart does nothing. Nothing. Yep. This is where uh, Gates op opens up the door a little bit, I think. I think it might have slammed that door a little bit. Yeah, it's crazy how how just about maybe uh, six six shots ago we were talking about how Gates' team is kind of running away with it. Mm -hmm. And then within three turns it was tight again, and then boom, uh, all of a sudden it's a 150-point lead again. That last start might turn out to be uh, a big one. My... Do you open up the wedge first, or do you take away their wedges? That's always the, the gamble, right? Yeah, um, I take away their wedges uh, only because 915s only put you at f uh, 548. So if you take away both wedges, it's good. He's going to throw the 15, I think. And, and uh, I would take the shot now. Now, Maya? There it is. <laughs> he goes nine mark, three mark, nine mark. You can tell how good of a time they're having back Absolutely. there. Absolutely, that's awesome to see. It's the finals here. They've been playing since nine o'clock East or Central Time, and uh, they're having a great time. Fifteen. Yep. Eight to three. It's a uh, it's a little bit of a reach, but we've seen it happen before, especially if Jesse just hits three sixteens here. One more of those will really close that door, and it does. But only hitting three 16s uh, makes eight to three a little more reasonable of a chance. Well, he almost he didn't have a grip there, did he? Yeah, I think after that first start, it man for him to focus back in on this and and do that leaves it doable. Five to three. The last turn, Gates uh, missed with his first two darts. I don't see it happening this time. I think he, I think he hits it. Uh. Yeah, that first dart was a blocker for him. But he hits it on dart three anyway. What a dart. And for the first time in this tournament, the advantage goes to Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard as they now are the team with the least, least amount of losses. Yes, absolutely. What a, what a format. So if Johnny, Jules, and Mike lose this next match, they're out of this thing. If they win it, we just go to one leg of cricket for everything. I love it. I'm telling you. But once again, that's exactly what we want. It really is the brilliance of, of this format of, of the triple elimination brackets that you can only find with partners promoting darts and tournament champions. It just evens everything out so much. So they're, again, trying to figure out the format. It's going to be the same format that they just played. It'll be cricket, 0-1 cricket. Uh, because the team with the least amount of losses only has one loss. So they play the one-loss bracket side. If we can, I think the next step here is to get the the uh, system to communicate with the CompuSport to automatically advance you. Yep. You can see they're asking the expert with the pink hair there, the format that it should be. And hopefully he's correct, but he will be because he's played in this multiple times before. Yes. Uh, he 
runs but, the Nationals and stuff like that, so he's going to be familiar with this completely. But unfortunately, he's got his hand on hip, and he's like, you know what? I don't know. I've, I haven't made it this far. So He's like, uh, I'm a little I, teapot, short and stout. Yeah, just just ask someone else because I do not know, guys. And what do I do with my hands while I'm talking to you guys? Okay, I am here to just video. That's it. <laughs> don't ask me because if I'm wrong, I don't want to deal with the consequences of that, which is to shave my head and remove the pink that I just put in there. Yeah, what do you guys think? Look at the hey dudes. He's got they match their pink on on the with the pink hair. It's <laughs> impressive, right? It is impressive. And is that pink? Oh yeah. The hey dudes are pink. They are. Okay. They have a nice pink hue to them. Again, the the great thing is that all of these players are friends to where they can just talk this out. It might be a little bit more awkward if you've never met your the team that you're playing in the finals before or something Absolutely. along those lines. As Andy comes over and says, guys, come on. you got two minutes or else uh, <laughs> someone <Forfeit>. is losing. <laughs> Show me one. Jules is right now going, what, do you want to go first again yeah. on this diddle like you have been so far, or do you want to change it up? He's like, all right, I guess I'll go first again. Do you like going first or second on the diddle? Um, Do you like that blocker dart? Yeah. I'm going to guess that was a bad dart based on his reaction. <laughs> yeah, I like going first, uh, especially against Gates. Gates hates going first. Really? Yeah, he always wants to see one. Uh, okay. I feel like he focuses more. So if you ever have to have the choice with Gates, guys, always make him show. Just, just, And if you, every diddle you win from now on against Gates, I expect a royalty. We'll give you 10 cents on the 10 cents. Boom. Goes the 10 cents light. <laughs> you didn't have to throw the eye on there at the end. It, it might have ruined it. Um, Whatever. Forever. Uh, so now I can't say it anymore. All right, here we go. Thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, no problem. Race to two. Again, the format should be the exact same. Cricket, 0-1 cricket. <laughs> at least someone liked the teapot reference. Starting off with cricket here, and it's Jules Van Dongen, who has just taken... Honestly, the the world stage by storm here recently with his averages in the PDC. Oh, absolutely. He's uh, he's he's making a, a much bigger uh, impact uh, than I did over there, and it's great to see. I, I'm not ashamed to uh, say that at all. Uh, I mean, how does it feel to finally like catch on and just start winning some matches over there? Oh, it's unbelievable. And it, I think we had kind of the same story. You know, I struggled the first year. He struggled the first year. He just told me um, that out of the first uh, 30 matches he played in the PDC, he went out first round in the first 23. I actually, uh, I know exactly where he got that information from. Mark Lacombe does a great job with stats, and I know that he just told us that stat, too. Okay. Um, it's one of the, He tracks you know, how they do in those player championships because those are the most important for um, our North American dart players until they get in that top 64 and can play in a lot more of those events. Absolutely, absolutely. I would like, uh, if you're listening now, Mark, uh, if you are on the chat, I want to know what mine was. Thank you in advance. I don't think you want to know that. Sorry. <laughs> to be honest, I think it's a little <laughs> better than 23 out of 30. But Probably. But Jules is doing a way yeah. better second year than me. Way better. I mean, he just, he seems to just Found it. Yeah. And absolutely. Confidence he, goes a long way, right? He knows he belongs now, and yep. that's what's important. And I think other people do too. Yes. And I think that's also important. Yep. Agreed. Speaking of the handsome devil himself, there he is, Mr. Jules Van Dongen. The twirl. So when you throw a dart that way and you twirl it, because I twirled my first one coming up mm -hmm. to get it right. It has to be perfect, or it just it just doesn't feel right. Your barrel is very standard grip with a straight barrel. It is. Um, is that just to, in case that grip is a little bit off, it doesn't feel any different depending exactly. on where you're grabbing it? Yep. Because the most important thing is consistency. That's Mike it. Carter, big seven mark there to regain control of this leg. Leg number one. Right now, the advantage has turned in favor of Jeremiah Millar, Jesse Gore, and Leonard Gates, who now still only have one loss. 
That is correct. But if if I'm not mistaken, Jules, Johnny, and Mike have won the first leg in every single set, and then went. At least in the finals, have gone have yes. lost leg three. So if that's the case, let's get to leg three so we can see what happens. Again, this format does favor leg two to go to the team that goes first. Although, honestly, Johnny, Jules, and Mike had an advantage there in that second leg to, to steal it and just could not get it done. Uh, Mike Carter missed the trip 14 on dart two. Yeah, it took a little bit longer than Jules wanted it to to switch. But he's a professional, so he just pauses for a second. Get rid of those 17s. Seven-point lead there. Um, I might have went 17 and then went to the point, but um, Jules did not, and Gates is looking to yep. punish him with a nine mark. Yeah, that's how you do it right there if you're Leonard Gates. And Mike Carter now. A lot of pressure on Mike. You got to stay up there because you missed the double. You give him a chance to steal control. Must have been blocked after dart two. Must have been. I think uh, I think Jeremiah is saying uh, load up the 15s and see what Johnny does behind Jeremiah. Yeah, a little bit of bad electrician syndrome in that uh, in that round there for Jeremiah, just firing the wrong side of the triple. That's it. No matter uh, what I do here, I would shut the 15 down. He is not listening to you, but that'll do as well. Just as good. Yeah, it forces. Jesse was probably going to stay there anyway, but now he cannot think about closing one of those other numbers, even with the first two. Oh, that's an unlucky third dart there on the other side of that wire. Oh, no. We have so much confidence in ourselves. That's why we shoot the triple first, mm -hmm. the 20, the point, because we just know we're not going to miss that close. We only need two, and then that happens more often than not. And every time that the door has been opened here for Leonard, he's he's walked right through it. Seven will do. Puts pressure back on Mike. Here's a question for you. Is there a round limit on this? I believe so. It's in, I was about to say, in the CSE, it's 20. So there you go. It's 20. But that Jer was a great round there from Mike Carter. Absolutely. Jeremiah, again, just saying, hey, I'm going to shoot the white horse here and force them to hit the three. He, I know he just asked Leonard. He's like, do you feel more comfortable with me hitting the white horse or the four bulls here? He hates the 18. Man. You just... <laughs> I feel like you just voodoo dolled him there on dart two. He hates the 18. All right, so if you're Johnny, are you, in your mind, you go for it, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, if I was Johnny, That's I would have just safe shot. for it. It, did, it didn't matter. A very safe shot. Uh, unnecessary in my eyes, but um, as he gives it to Jeremiah back there. I don't know if you saw that. I love it. All right, so for leg number one here, and a must win for Jules, Johnny, and Mike, and they've won it every time so far. Will the trend uh, shift here? Yeah, and uh, they had an opportunity to shift the trend last set with uh, Gates and Millar only opening up with two bulls each. Yep. So... Uh, I don't expect that again from Gates and Millar. I expect them both to hit hat tricks. So I think we get a perfect happens. leg from one of these teams here. Yeah, I think it's more more apt to come from the first player, um, less pressure, and uh, we'll see what happens. So far, 
Stay in chalk. Because chalk for these guys is hitting. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that phrase, but we'll just run with it. Like it's par for the course. Oh, gotcha. Maya, first one to miss. Still in the driver's seat as the team going first, though. That is correct. You're allowed to miss one of those bowls. Ooh, that's a bad first start. And that's why. Just blocks you. Just blocks you. Bad position. Unlucky there. If it had just been one, even in that spot, you can just stay there. Even yep. if you're two holes in, you can stay there. You don't have to move, so. You still have room up above. Exactly. That one hole uh, really hurts you there. A lot of, lot of pressure on Johnny. And more importantly, the pressure is completely off Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard to tie this up here. Oh, yeah. They have nine darts from here, from 287. And uh, if you're giving me nine darts, well, unless they go 180, 174. Which it's and Jules. Jules, he'll yeah. know that. He'll know. He's going to go 180 here. He, he knows that's what he needs. Just going to look at the triples. Triples. Yeah, triple Triples. 20. Oh, and he it does is, hit them. <laughs> y'all see that? Y'all miss that one? 180 from Jules Van Dongen. <laughs> <laughs> A spotter. Sorry, so, guys. We uh, He flew over from the PDC. And Maya's not going to hit this 137. <laughs> Jeez. How about a Hollywood finish here? I mean, this to is. To force it. This to go to the one leg of cricket. Just at least hit the first two. Like, at least give us that satisfaction. He hits nine marks all the time. It's just not one of those. Not anymore. It's a lot of pressure. Yep. Smart third. All right, he should be going uh, six here. Six for bullseye. Six, six bull. Six bull, Jesse. Don't second guess this, buddy. Jeremiah, what are you doing? Jesse's in open for a reason, buddy. <laughs> they just like to talk it out. Jeremiah's a talker as a partner. Six bull. Nice there it easy. is. Let's go to another last leg decider, buddy. That's it. Here it is. So far, this is favored Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard. Does it again. If it does, this match is over. It is over. And uh, Jules put it right in the double bowl. And Gates is one hole out. And we were going to feature Division One on board, two. This match, of course, going as long as it is. Uh, did not allow us to do that. But congratulations to uh, our winners, Bobby, Jordan, and Tyler of Division One. Good victory for those gents. Once again, this is going to go, uh, who, at what point in time will they be able to shut that 20 down? Well, it's going to take a hot minute now. Still nine mark not, start. Yeah. Like I said, I, if I go 57-57 here, I'm taking a shot at the 20. Well, but there's the first triple. That's just me. He does try to take away the high ground there. Man, I, I did not know you guys at your top level paid that much attention to it. <laughs> Honestly, like I've always talked about it like that, right? But I did not know that that's, that's where the attention was uh, mainly played on the math here. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's why, uh, that, that you know, I credit the math and the strategy to 85% of my wins. Well, I know how I'm playing. Correct from this point forward. I mean, I'm going to miss everything, but at least I know what I'm going to shoot at the right thing. Like what would WW... DD, what would Danny do? And at least as long as I answer that question correctly, that's all that matters, right? Absolutely. Of course, you're way more talented than me, so I probably shouldn't use your strategy. Not way more. <laughs> um, a lot more, just not way more. Let's go seven mark by Jesse, just kind of keeping it in reach a little yeah. bit. Uh, Jules right here. Uh, it's going to shut the 17 down, but go 20 first because that's a momentum dart for him. This is a must win for Johnny, Jules, and Mike. Look at that. 16. Nah, he said I'm going to stay on the 20. It's 
kind of just putting it out of reach, making yeah. sure that, hey, if I have the 20, you're never going to take a look at it. You cannot lose this this leg, right? So this is where you're going to see heavy pointing from from the team because the more points you have, the you can't lose. You can't lose with more points than your opponent. <laughs> Sean, man, you hit that one right on the nose. Well done, buddy. Just call me John Madden. <laughs> the team with the most points at the end of the game win the game. Shocking statistic. <laughs> You've been on it. You've been on it, though. A nine here, only 35 points down. And once again, this is a situation where Johnny is going to be like, you know what, let me just hurry up and shut this 15 down yep. and hit 120 points. No matter what, he did his job there. He did, but... Um, so here it is. It's it's six six to three. Yep. If I, if I hit the bull here, I'm going to twenty. Especially you blocking it like that. Yeah, but my partner's name is Jules Van Dongen. That's it. You no, know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's it's five to three, and yeah. no matter what, we've seen players miss this of shot. Course. Hey, let's play more, one more leg of cricket. Let's do it, buddy. <laughs> here, here we, we go. go. Uh, we're going the entire way, which is all we could expect from this no cap. We said it from the get go. We thought it was going to go to this point. Everyone watching along with us deserves this. Who wins the last leg decider, guys? This is it. Race to one. One game of cricket to decide the whole thing. Two losses apiece. This is it. Is it Johnny, Jules, and Mike, or is it Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard? Let us know in the chat. Uh... I what think, do you got? I, I think uh, Jules will win the cork, and I think Jules' team will win. I'll even, I'll even step it up. I said I think Jules hits a nine, hits a nine mark in the right off the gate. Uh, so, if he hits a nine, they win. Uh, yep. If he, what he can't do is start out with five because I feel like uh, sometimes in those positions, when you know it's the last game. You, you kind of you stress it a little bit more, and I feel like that's when more five marks come. So I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that it opens up with a five. Would you say five or less actually is almost like now you're going second? If, you're, oh, I mean, absolutely. if your opponent hits a nine right, right after you, you are going second. Then. Absolutely. Absolutely. The odds I'm right are, are very slim here, by the way, because <laughs> it's Jules. Yeah. Oh. Well, you can't hit a five. You get a double here for no reason. Well, Mike would. <laughs> Only but four. There it is. I mean, and that's that's the situation. Gates is right back to get to yeah. Leonard. Gates is gonna gonna trip this nineteen and and lick his chops. Take your shot. No, okay. Which is that, that's that's odd there. You know, you took your shot when you're down one hundred and twenty. Yep. You're only down one. Why not take your shot there? I agree with you completely. In, in that regard, I also really like pointing as much as possible in a very last leg. That's yep. just how I would think about things. But again, I am not this level of player, so. I think Jeremiah there's a saying again, if, if I trip the 19, I'm taking my shot. Mm, he's going to stay there now. I'm. That gave him a... So that gave him a 19, but you can see his tip is in the trip seven. Because that tip was not there before he shot that dart. Was it not? No. So he kind of got a little lucky that I felt like it had 19. to have been. I, I'm just, I don't I, think that that tip was there. I didn't see it. Because it's very bright right now in, yeah. that, in that board. I don't think Johnny, will Johnny take a look at the 19? He has been. He's been the player that's taken the shot. Um, he won't now. So if you're Gates' team, you, after the first rotation, you're going to be up in points most likely. That's a win. Oh, absolutely. Look at this from Jesse Gore. Big nine mark from the Floridian. Uh, their third player did really well right there. Their third player did amazingly well. Do 
difference might be Jules going four mark, five mark in his first two rounds. Maybe. Uh -huh. Gates likes to point in the last leg decider, so I don't think he looks at the 20 until... Oh, yes Dart two. Look at that. Oh. Well, that'll work. And they go nine mark, nine mark. And that's what happens when you play a team like Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard is that if they get hot at the right time, it, it makes all the difference. But Mike Carter with this? another nine. That's the third nine mark of the leg. Are you not entertained? This is unbelievable. This is this is exactly what we wanted. I mean, this is why the TOC exists. It's for these right here. See so if Maya responds as well. Did you look over? I don't think so. Yeah. He missed it there, but I, I, w I wouldn't have either. Not, not in the last leg. You got the bigger number. Make them... Uh, not be able to catch it with two triples, but he did miss, and it, it opens up the door for Johnny. Yeah, seven mark from Johnny Lackey. This is a good leg. Oh, this, this is, is a good wonderful. Leg. This is exactly what we're looking for. This is round six, and they're already over 500 points each for the most part. Jesse's feeling it. Is he going to take the shot? No. They're staying... Point, point, point. They're not really hero darting right now. The only person that'll heal dart, hero dart is Jules in this position. There it is. And I like that shot. I, I like too. that shot. Jen ready to catch the winning moments. Just got to stay there. Two wedges down. Got to stay there. Which is exactly why Jules did what he did. You force your opponent to, Absolutely. to do something. You're dictating what your opponent has to do. If Mike trips the first first dart here, does it close? If I'm playing your style of, of game, absolutely I do. He'll be right? at 629. Yeah, he'll be at 629. They can't point and shut everything down, I think. Uh, and, and that's what they're talking about right now is Gates and Millar. Yeah, yeah, he looked at it under three. Shot at it, yeah. Smart shot. Smart play. Those two triples, though, was, was putting a lot of emphasis on Jeremiah not leaving the 19. And he's struggling. Yeah, again, his follow through is getting a little snatchy there. That's another okay. unlucky dart on dart three. Yep, again. Johnny looks so calm yep. back there. It's only five bulls to three right now. Shut the 19 down first. I would. You also have two wedges. Yeah, absolutely. But that's the worst thing you can imagine on the first two darts there. Yeah, he'll point the 18s. The 17s weren't working for him, so just look at that new target. I wonder if Jesse still has his magnets uh, in the trip 19. Man, this is starting to get a little nervy. It started out hot, and now it's now it's getting a little bit more nervy. First event of the weekend of the week. It's not nervy for Jules, though. He's built for these moments. Oh. <laughs> the Dutch Dragon is trying to single-handedly keep his team in control. Is this the moment? It's the first time we've seen that. Yep. Do we get a come on Gator after he, he smacks in a nine? I would think that would be the perfect time for it. Mm -hmm. But he usually does that in a yelling. I think he just said point all day. Yep. And again, you lose the rhythm and... Nineteen here. You got rid of it. Yep. Yeah, got to at that point. If the seventeen's blocked, go eighteen here on dart three. There it is. Three singles, but so so this is this is where it kind of changes a little bit, right? You're in round eleven. Yep. Yeah, you're over halfway through the rounds. Just point. 
and that's what he's going to do. And that's why you saw him go right to opening up the new wedge. Mm -hmm. This is a race to one. This is for everything. Right here, right now. Finals of the no cap. What a great opening event here. Tournament of Champions in Kansas City, Missouri. At the KCI Expo Center. If I'm Jesse, I, uh, I shut this... No, I don't shut it down, sorry. I point sixteens here. He's looking to close. Oh, look at this. Jesse oh, Gore at the right time. What oh, a moment. My goodness. Oh, Jules is not happy. I don't know if you saw the head shake. Yeah. Not happy, and then he's just going to bang in a nine. Wow. And he's he still is. not happy. Yeah. Is that too little too late, or is Gator going to open up the door? He's not going to open up the door. Of course, the la very last like the cider goes over 1,000 go points. Oh, my goodness. Both teams are going to get over 1,000 points here, bud. Yeah, last, absolutely. Very last like the cider. You wouldn't have it any other way. No. Mike's going to answer. Oh, he's got to shut it. Don't shoot the double. He, he did. does, and he hits it. He did. Right on the bottom wire of it, too. Oh, my goodness. Winning he's darts here for Jeremiah Millar. Double ball, double ball. No, he's going to go bull first and then 15. And if he hits it, then he'll go back to the bull. If not, he'll close I'm just saying 15. if he goes double bull first start, he's going to stay there to get no, the point won't. lead, and then he'll go 15. I don't think so. No, you think he'll try I to? I think he'll go bull. No matter what it is, he'll go 15. Well, single bull does not give him winning darts anymore. But you were right on the close of the 15 zone dart, too. And this is the moment. Does player three on yep. Jules win? Jules' team win it? I mean... He's, he's been playing pretty well, but he's been a little, little suspect this last leg. Jesse's been playing better in this leg, but it doesn't matter if he hits three bowls here. One more. No! Oh, oh my goodness. So Jesse oh Gore is going to get a look at this. Snatched it down. Johnny was saying he was nervous. He only nervous. needs two. Johnny's, Johnny was saying he was nervous. Did you see that? Yep. So here we go. Just, I don't think he misses this. To get it done, he's thrown so well in this yeah, leg particularly. Absolutely. There's one. One more. And he gets it done. Wow, what a finals. Johnny, Jules, and Mike get second place. Jeremiah, Jesse, and Leonard take it down. You feel bad for Johnny Lackey there. You understand the situation and why it happens. First of all, it was the wire. It was an unlucky wire. And secondly, um, I mean, in that position, there's so much pressure on that third one. Uh, yeah, a lot of pressure. Pressure for all of us. And Johnny Johnny had played r really well all day. Um, and I hate that it came down to that. But uh, what a match. That's exactly what we expected. Come down to the last leg. That's what we all wanted. And it, and it, it gave everything there. Absolutely. It, what a start. <laughs> what a start. I'm loving it. This it, is great. It only gets better. That was just an open triples event, buddy, to, to go that, that distance. Uh, we still have the men's CSI tomorrow. We have the women's CSI on Sunday. We have the CDI as well. And then, of course, the TOC finale, which is going to be an amazing, amazing time. The mixed CDI is on Tuesday. The women's CSI is on Monday. Tomorrow, of course, the men's CSI. So a lot of fantastic events still left to go at the Tournament of Champions. Um, my goodness. I'm Sean Green, joined by Danny Baggish. Danny, it's been absolutely a pleasure to have you in the booth with us so far. You've, I mean, I, I feel smarter. Listen, uh, my advice doesn't work for everyone, but if I have advice for anyone, always have more points at the end of the leg. <laughs> it would always win that way. <laughs> Man, what a, what a match. Jesse Gore shot phenomenal. Uh, that, that was, that was the, the, best match and, and the best two teams yep. uh, in this event and, and they proved it there and yeah it, it was great it gave us everything and uh wow what a win for all of us absolutely which let's be honest they won money but we're the real winners uh the viewers are the real winners to hear our voice <laughs> at least yours 100 percent. all right well we that i we'll be back tonight uh, for doubles, open doubles, which is only going to bring more amazingness. 
Uh, so uh, we will see you guys in a few hours. Sean Green, Danny Baggish, joined, of course, by Will Stewart, Jen Mounts, and Nick DeShera in the background. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, guys.